This is Tech Pulse. Coming up on Tech Show Pulse today, the first 3D printed handgun designs has been uh, released and the government orders its removal. Google Plus adds instant replay and rewind to Hangouts and our Sharp Aqua smartphone. All of this coming up next on Tech Pulse. All right, all right, this is Tech Pulse 4. You know what? I don't even know what the date is today because the days just keep blending together. This is uh, what, May 13th? And in the studio today, we have none other than DJ Kevin Stu. So you know this edition of Tech Pulse is going to be off the hook right there. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Kevin? What's, what's going on, man? Greetings and salutations to you. Yeah, man. Good to have you in the studio, man. I didn't know you was going to wear gray kind of like me, you know? You know, you know we, we full just cell coordinate them like that, man. Full sell them different. Full sell them different. Or great minds think alike. I prefer to think of the latter, you know what I'm saying? Great minds think alike, not the fool. <laughs> <laughs> in the back. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah, man. In the back, we got Devin as usual. Devin, what's up, man? What's, what's been going on? I hear you've been keeping late nights. Oh, Hello. that's new. <laughs> what late night? Who, me? When? You, Never. Man, that's, that's what I've been, that's the word on the I street. I don't have nights. Yeah. That's nights? What's that? <laughs> late? You just have days. Just, that's it. I hear you, man. I hear you. All right. happening, one flowing into the other. One flowing right into the other. So let's, let's kick off with that first story. Now, we talked about a while ago, Kevin. Mm. They have um, 3D printing technology right that allows you to print objects so let's say you uh um need a wrench right mm -hmm. you don't have no wrench you don't want to go to a store you download the design of the wrench into a printer and it prints out a wrench not a picture of a wrench but an actual wrench you can take up and use right away but okay a fully functional wrench. fully functional wrench Everything with the with the, the dials, everything. You put it in. Devin was blown away by that man. When when I showed that picture right here, you put it in the design, download it into the printer. Yeah. Wrench come out about an hour. So no more walking around. I got to go to the hardware store. I got to go to Home Depot. No no no. That's done. You just buy the raw materials, put it into the printer, and you press print. Once you download those designs, and your wrench come out. Right. You see? Now, answer me this one question. And I might be jumping the gun, no pun intended. The gun? <laughs> a, little, a little bit here by asking this question. What kind of raw materials are we talking about? Like plastics, you know, say any kind of resins that something would be made out of metal. You anything know, for right it's now, it's form, plastics. Uh, formable. Right, anything malleable. Shapeable. Right, type of, uh, type of uh, and, material. And so, this material is available specifically for this for printers, printer. yeah. Mm -hmm. Materials are available. Matter of fact, as you asking that question, we got a story here that tells us that Staple is selling the first 3D printers right now for th what $13.99. First 3D printers right today. You can go out and get yourself for $1,400. Get yourself a 3D printer, not. That prints pictures in 3D and you looking at some kind of uh, 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 razzle dazzle. Now, nah. 3D meaning that you want these shades right here, you put the designs in there, and boom, this come out, and you go like this. You ready to start your day right there? You know what I'm saying? That's that's what 3D printers are doing. And the the, the cool thing is, this guy, he had the first. We we did the story last week. We had the first 3D printed handgun available. He created. Uh, the design for a handgun, he put it in a 3D printer, mm -hmm. and a handgun came out. Can and I he put a... Uh, Can I ask a question? Yeah. What does this mean for Jamaica? <laughs> Wait, I want to come what back to that question. <laughs> what does that mean for the country of Jamaica? Uh, we're going we, we're gonna to show you a video right here of the firing of this 3D handgun. Now, it looked like a toy, but... This thing is a fully functional gun, and as the guy release the uh, um, um, the uh, the plans, the designs online, the government stepped in and ordered that that thing be taken down. Now, 
We were saying here, Devin, uh, last week that that's going to be one of the negatives with 3D printing because you have the ability to print anything, mm -hmm. any kind of design. So you don't have to say, well, um, you know, I got to get a gun at the corner no more. Nah, I just print it right there. Print it right in my house. And the guy put in a, a, a steel bearing inside the gun because by law, if you have a gun, it has to be detectable. So he put that steel uh, part in there so that if he goes through a metal detector, it can be detectable. Okay. But he did that. The criminal is not going to say, let me go ahead and put that metal you thing see, in that's there. That's the kicker right there because you said by law. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I am not a law abiding citizen. Right. What will make me do something by law? There you go. And that's the question. And we were saying last week, how is the government going to regulate this? Okay, they, they took down the designs. But if this guy had it, you know, he didn't get it from anywhere. He created the design. So if he could do it, other people can do it too. Just because it's not widely available don't mean that people out there can't get it. So that's one of the negatives. But we also have a lot of medical implications that 3D printing can do. They've been able to print bone. They've been able to print jaw, jaw bone, like with the teeth in it and everything. So people that's in accidents and so forth, they don't have to, to uh, uh, if their bones are crushed, they don't have to like put metal plates in okay. your arm anymore. They can actually print bone material and put bone in your arm. You see, that's what the, I see, I, I, I see right there, you're looking like, bone, man, I, not, I don't understand this not, thing. Not, not fiber, glass, <laughs> no, no. plastic, but bone. But, well, not your actual, because they can't replicate oh, the natural, I'm saying, you know. but synthetic bone. Let me chicken, put it that way. Chicken yeah. in jeopardy. <laughs> All so chicken bones. <laughs> let, me, let, let me go and show up this, this video here because according to um, uh, uh, Forbes, the test firing, and the guy called the gun the Liberator. That's what he called the, the gun that he made, the Liberator. So um, it was done uh, uh, earlier, <laughs> earlier in May, May 2nd, at a private uh, gun range in Austin, Texas. The weapon fired successfully, you know, made of plastics, and this thing fired successfully um, a single uh, 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 38 round through its plastic barrel without any problems or obvious damage to the gun. So the gun works. And we got a video of it But here. you only fired it once. You only fired it once, yeah. But the fact that it worked, that's a step. But it worked once. <laughs> so unless he's a marksman, that one time better count. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Lord. So you, you, you see what I saw? So Devin, let me ask you this, man. Yeah. With something like this, right? The government stepped right in yes. and said, you got to take these designs down. What, what, what do you think that's going to do for, I mean, now this thing is out now. You see what I'm saying? People yes. are doing it. So what do you think this is going to do for 3D printing? Matter of fact, let me show you this picture real quick before I do this one. Let me show you this picture of this guy actually handling this gun. They had one where they, um, uh, 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 the guy fired it. But it was like with a remote, they had like a string attached to the trigger just because they didn't know if it was going to backfire or whatnot, so nobody wanted to be there. Right. They did that, it worked. So then the guy decided, let me go ahead and try and fire it with my hand now, and he did that too. And this is a picture of that right there. So I'm telling you, man, the world of 3D printing, you know what I'm saying, you have on the scary side and you got the, the good side with the medical implication, you have the good side where I don't have to worry about going to the store no more, I can, I can print things that I need around the house, dishes, um, art, all of that stuff. Kevin right is there. thinking. Kevin is thinking. Kevin That's, is thinking right there. And see, yeah. this is the picture right here. This is the guy right there. The guy is like, yes. And if you can see, let, let me try and enlarge that real quick. So you can, yeah, see? This is the gun right here that the guy is firing. The guy firing that thing, and it worked. You know what I'm saying? As you see, 3D uh, uh, printed gun shoots real bullets, not plastic BB gun. You know, this is real 38 round caliber bullets that can kill so hold on if you can create a gun why can't you create bullets too that's the next step probably too you know what i'm saying you print gun and bullets in your house and you go kill somebody right there you ain't gotta wait no more 48 hour waiting period because i but, gotta make sure you calm down nah, man. but you know from a from a government military standpoint mm. here you have think of this in a facility where you're putting out soldiers right. and you're giving them ammunition they can take this technology to the front we're assuming that there's a war right <laughs> and they'll never be out of ammo that's uh, kevin man that's that's the way we think here at tech pulse <laughs> we can interpolate <laughs> and we can 
add and we can recognize the real impact. That's serious. That's that's exactly what we're but, talking about. But exactly. It's for real though. They'll, they'll never be out of ammo. They'll never be out of weapons. So now it's up to the next guy to think of, oh gee, let me think of a new weapon. Right. So we hope that the guys, right, who are on the other side of the war don't have a printer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's right. hope, let's hope they yep. go, go to Staples and get that 3D printer. Matter of fact, let me show you the parts of the gun this guy um, um, printed. Because I, I just showed you the guy shooting it. But right here, I'm coming down video, here, this is, yeah, you, yeah. You, you don't see that video. Oh, I enlarge it too much. There we go. But these are all the parts of the gun that he printed. All plastics. But all plastics <laughs> right there. He put that bad boy together. And we're we, we, we going to show the video. But my point is 3D printing. This is an advance in technology, man. I mean, before, you have to either buy parts and then you have to build something yourself. Now, you can actually put a design in a printer with your computer, press print, and the parts come out. You see? No more you, 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 you just have to go to the store or you have to, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm having a barbecue. And I'm like, oh, man, I need a couple of cups, you know, for the children. I, I forgot to buy it. You ain't got to run out to the store, man. You put the design in there, print two copies, two cups come out, man. That's, that's just like that, you, know, you see? I, so I'm saying this thing is going, I mean, uh, in order way to say it, other than to say this is the next level of technology, how we use it now, this is going to define how this technology grows. Is 3D printing going to be something that's legal? If I was you, go out and buy your 3D printer now before the government ban it. You know what I'm saying? And then that way, the nobody can get 3D is, printers. The problem here is I do not have $1,400 to spare. Not for the regular and then man. How much, how much <laughs> is the, the, the material? Credit cards go way up <laughs> above $1,300, $1,400. So, so don't yeah, worry about that. Credit risk, you know, it's not an issue here. Oh, right, because I can create something and sell it on the black market, right? <laughs> so let no, me show you no this video. Intended. Yeah. Let me show you this video of the 3D. But you think you think that the, the government is going to um, look at this a little more closely? They already banned this guy. Do you think they're going <clears> to, <throat> sorry, look at 3D printing more closely now that something like this has come out? Well, I mean, well, what do you guys think? Do you think that this is going to be something that the government uh, yeah. now regulates? They, they would have of to. course, they, they will. They would have to. In it's fact, but how are you going to regulate someone printing something? The only way to do it is to just outlaw 3D printers. I mean, you don't know what I'm printing in my house. So the government alone uses it? The government they don't use, use it at all. Did they use a 3D printer? I'm thinking no. Yeah. And I, I don't do that very often. And there's a reason for it. <laughs> Here's a reason. <laughs> when they created the Glock, yeah. lightweight, mm. awesome. You think they used a 3D printer? Hey, you never know. You don't know how long this technology has been around. That is exactly where I'm going with it. <laughs> Let me see this video. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's check this video out, man. All right, we got that sound. Everything good? I guess you don't need to actually hear the bullet firing, but it would be good. We enlarge this thing so everybody can see it. All right. Yeah, see, now this is the gun right here, and it's on a string. If you can see that, that string right here. So you got soap on a rope, and you have gun on a rope. There cool. you go. There you go. So let's let's see now. All right. This is the test of the 3D, the first 3D printed gun to be fired. I don't see anything happening. This is like waiting to exhale. Yeah. Waiting with bated breath. <laughs> No, did you press uh, play yeah, because yeah, I, press play. It, I see the play button, which means... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's what happens when you're in the studio early. You know, sometimes things don't exactly go exactly the way you want it, but let's check it. Don't Are worry. Are you saying if you were later? <laughs> <laughs> would that work? Okay, yeah, 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 let's see. Okay, we got it. Yep, sound is good. Um, wait I'm, for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. All right, we got it. I don't know how many other people out there, how many 
people out there are like me going. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, this, the implications are serious, though, you know, with 3D it's printing. I'm, I don't think people, first of all, I don't think too many people know about 3D printing, this right. new technology that's right. out there. And secondly, the implications of 3D printing are major, major, major. Especially for medical. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, but on the other side, too. And we're, we're talking the about Jamaican the side. weapons yeah. part of it. And we're talking about, here, well, here Jamaican we're talking about side, you, a gun. Right. And on the medical side, you mentioned that it could, it, it really bone, has yeah. bone. But yeah. then you're talking about tools also. Yeah. Right. And bring it right down, gun is a dangerous weapon. But guess what? So is a knife. Yeah. Right. True, true. By the way, you can um, buy that in the store already. Uh, shout out to Natalie uh, from Fitizen. From where? Fitizen. Uh, where is that? Fitizen is a new community. Um, I think that's the best way to put it, right, mm -hmm. Natalie? A uh, community of individuals who are intended to keep mind, body, and soul fit. Oh, fi fit I like it. Yeah, yeah. I like it. It's when, cool. Natalie, we need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can up, you can up. you can have her on um one of these days. She might be starting a a, a, a daily weekly program on okay. um, my occasions live. So. Natalie, we need to talk. <laughs> okay. Look me up on Facebook, sorry. Facebook. <laughs> DJ right. Kevin Stu. Let's try this again. Looks like it's playing. Yeah. And yeah. And it did fire. There you go. I, I want to hear that again. You want to see it again? Yeah. All right. Hold on. For those of you that have that missed it. Yeah. Because you know, you, you, know, know, it's, it's you have to pay <coughs> attention. It happens like that. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a quick. It's a quick clip. You know. So we're gonna show that again. The first firing of a gun that was printed in 3D. Well, not in 3D, but I mean it was printed from a printer. Right. You know, so here we go again. And this, I mean, we've been talking about this on uh, Tech Pulse for a while now. 3D printing is, is huge. And now to see that obviously there's going to be a side of it that, um, you know, you can deny. All right, there we go. Watch for it. Watch for it. It's just a few seconds long. There we go. Uh, that one is paused. Here we go. Let me turn up the volume so they can hear that shot. <laughs> oh, here we go. Right. One, two. There you yep. go. Successful firing. And then right away, as those designs, once they did that, those designs, now the guy released it online for anyone to download so they could print their own 3D gun. And immediately, the government stepped in and said, no, 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 no. You got to take this thing down. The government ordered that those plans be taken down. And I mean, that, that's just going to be natural. The government not going to allow people to just freely right. be able to. Because it takes money out of their pocket. When they can create these weapons and collect a change off of it, then what the views and opinions expressed on okay. this show are not <laughs> And then no, the let's, between, is, the, between the three of us, can we just come up with like two, two uh, ideas, not, not talking about uh, medical, right? Okay. We know, we're, we're, yeah, that. That we did medical. We and know tools. medical implication and tools, and, and tools. Like, but tools are so wide, you know. I said a knife. You said a knife? <laughs> 3D, yeah, I mean, you, you could okay. Print so Kevin, if you have a ceramic knife, yeah. why can't you create a knife? And, Look at a ceramic knife. I'm it's serious. Like it's a hit. Yeah, we buy knives regularly, you know, so stuff like that. So let, can we do that real quick, uh, Reggie? Can we just come up with two? Because nah. I'm, I'm fascinated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fascinated by the idea of 3D stuff. printing. Yeah. All right. Look at this. Look yes. at this. A child coming up and wants a particular toy. There you go. And the parent says, no, I'm I not going to buy you a toy. Yeah. 
we have this here, you go make a toy and then assemble it. Now, the good thing is that, again, you're putting minds to work. Right. Like what we used to do right. growing yeah. up. And, and I, I use we loosely. <laughs> <laughs> but like we used to do growing up, we, we're actually using our minds. Right. Lego, back in the day, it's, it's, it's big again, but it's big yeah. on another mm -hmm. scale. That's really where, yeah, just, it's a Lego and but digital Lego. Yeah, you oh, know, I'm you're creating good. your, you, there's, there's no limit to your game pieces now. Don't say gaming, because <laughs> no, Reggie, as a child. Reggie, see, Reggie woke up. Gaming, <laughs> no, that's exactly it. Exactly what, yeah. what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> Not gaming pieces, there game you go. pieces. And I'm, use, I'm going from the, the perspective of child building, right. using their, their, their motor skills right. and their imagination. It's, it's powerful, it's powerful. Now, taking it a step further, architects build models all the time. And they're going to say, okay, <coughs> and engineers. Right. Here is the model of a house, a car, this. whatever. Yeah. Now they can say, a car, yeah, let's use a car. Mm. Or an engine. Now they can say, here is how I would really like for it to work. Right. And do, and if, it's, if it's an electric motor, right. they can actually <coughs> build it and power it and show it right there. Scale down. But right, but, but everything is, is right there, right? Yeah. <coughs> now, again, that's a, that's a plus. That's because a plus. the person doing it. Right. What about all the jobs that it would have created if I'm that wasn't the, if that was, you're right. If that wasn't there. Right. So, with the implementation of a tool like this, mm. you're pretty much cutting out about, well, depending on the industry. Right, right. Uh, 10,000 people, easy. But, but think of it this way too. I mean, okay, so, so Devin, you said you got toys, right? You yeah. got toys and tools. Here's what I got, Devin. Mm -hmm. What if now, we all seen Star Trek with the replicators, mm -hmm. right? What about food? Eventually, being able to put that uh, in, yeah, and then a, my plate of food comes right out. I thought about that too. You know, I mean, I don't know how it would work in this case to build organic, uh, uh, to to make organic material out of synthetic material. They they haven't been able to do that. That's I, not I, something that's possible. I'm, I'm not really looking forward but, to that. <laughs> but my point is, what if you could do something like that? You know, no more. I mean, th this this would be the new microwave. You know, back in the day, microwave came out and everyone right. was like, oh, I don't have to cook no more. I just pop that thing in the microwave. Now, you come home, you don't even have to cook no more. You know, you just say, what do you want for dinner? Right. Oh, a steak? All right. Type that's, that bad boy in. Boom. You know what I'm saying? You got but, a, a organic, but well, synthetic. You, you did say... You need to have the raw material. You have to have the raw So, <laughs> I'm going to create steak with what raw material? Yeah, that, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Well, but, but I have a video here. I brought up a video to show people how uh, uh, 3D printing works for people who haven't seen it yet on Tech Pulse. How 3D printing works in terms of this is what people used to do um, uh, when 3D printers were huge. Now 3D printers are smaller. But this is, this is some of the things they were in, uh, able to do right here. Let me just show this quick five-minute video here real fast. For those of you that was like, man, this guy, he talking about 3D printing again and then gave us no kind of info? All right. All right. Got you right now. Got you right here. This guy is going to show you what he has done in his 3D printing for these wrenches that he printed. <clears throat> printed. Not went out and bought and constructed. And constructed. Printed. See, that's... That's the thing right there, okay. All right, cool. All right, Devin, we got the sound, everything good? Everything's good, let's do it, let's do it. Can't hear anything. Maybe I have it muted. Yeah, maybe, check that. All right, let's check this out again. This it guy does is, look muted. This, this, this guy is on a roll right now. Yep, muted. 
Don't try. All right. And we'll take you over. Yeah, yeah. You know, hey, you know, I gotta, I gotta keep everyone guessing. You say, all right, now we're ready. Now we're ready to show you exactly. Now this guy printed a variety of sizes of wrenches, and this is just something that he did just to show you what was possible. He didn't need it, but he was just showing you what was possible. A variety of sizes. So if you have different size tools, different size cups, whatever, you can print these things right here. Okay, here we go. Different size knives. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm you're fixated on weapons. Today, I'm introducing you to right, you some check, of the check models that recently uh, produced okay. on the Object Connex 500 multi-material 3D printer. Please. So come have a look. Here we have a series of six wrenches that I've printed. That's All of these wrenches are printed at the same yeah. time on the same building. Are you, are you really we'll wrapping your head around this guy? I'll show you how they've actually been built. 3D in printing. The that was printing printed. In your, um, what's that wasn't fantastic me. About you could print that in your living room or wherever your printer is. Is that we now yeah. have uh, a new ABS-like digital material. I guess they use stuff like that on And trucks. this material has the strength and toughness of no, ABS-grade engineering plastics. So it's perfect for simulating wrenches in real functional situations. And the, the thing works. And as you can that, see, that gear. it has yeah, the moving works, parts. The, the material that they're using. It looks like a real wrench. It looks like a real wrench. The fine details and smooth surfaces. This, of course, is one of the larger sizes that comes out of the Connex 500, which has the largest build tray size. And of course, if we scale down all the way to the smallest wrench, it still works exactly as it should. And of course, if we take a piece of pipe that I found, and we scale this out a bit, we should be able to tighten this hand tight. So it's not breaking. That's hand tight. I won't be able to no, undo that with my hand. So it's cracking. That's hand tight. So this is the new ABS material, prints on the Object Connex 3D printer, and now we'll take you over to show you how it's actually made. Follow me. Now this is the industrial 3D printer. This is not what you're going to buy, obviously, for your home. The Object Connex 5 was cheap. On this 3D printer, if you get a bit closer, you can actually see inside all six of the wrenches being produced. They're now being printed. All of them are printed on the same tray at the same time. And Multiple as you can see, the print head moves backwards and forwards. It's it like ejects a, a photopolymer resin onto the build tray in 16 micron layers. After each layer is laid down in liquid form, as you can see, there's a UV light that follows the print head and it cures the material immediately after it's laid down. In other words, it hardens the material. Once the material is hard, you have the next layer that's placed on top. Now this process goes on until the final product prototypes can be taken out of the machine. Over here on the computer screen, you can actually see the CAD design. This is your initial CAD design. This is how it looks on the screen. And as you can see, you have your build tray and you can arrange how you're going to print your various spanners and how you're going to lay them out. So in this case, I'm printing six at once. What's also great about the Connex is that I can print these different wrenches in a, in a variety of different materials. In this case, I print them in ABS-like material, but we can also print them in a variety of Vero and Tango materials, which are flexible um, and rigid materials, which have different shades and textures. Once these come out of the tray, we then take it to the washroom. As you can see, there is a material on these, a support material. A support material is required when there's complex geometries such as these moving parts. There's always going to be a gap in between and this gap needs to be supported. So we have a support material that's washed away very easily with a water jet. And then you have your finished part. So there you go. That is 3D printing for those of you that haven't seen it. That's an industrial 3D printer and that technology 
is now coming to your homes via Staples. So, case two. Now, you, you've seen that in action, right? Is that, that the first time you've ever seen a 3D printer in action as far yeah. as... Okay, so that's the first time you've seen it, right? So, <laughs> so, now that you know that the world of 3D... And it's not just that's in a lab, you know, because it's one thing to look at and say, oh, man, they come up with this in a lab somewhere, but, you know, it can't affect me because I don't have that lab. Now, you know, Staples for $1,400 is bringing that to your home. A scaled-down version, not that big, but... I mean, in terms of you can print things now. You can print cups, you can print small wrenches, things like that. Maybe nothing as gigantic as that, but the point is, you can do that. What do you think that's going to do for just people, their lives in general, as far as when this technology really, people understand that this takes off? I mean, if this was affordable, let's say the printer was $100, would that be something you would be interested in buying? And you could get the raw materials, you know, pennies on the dollar. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. <laughs> In fact, just to let everyone out there know, I take sponsorships. So <laughs> and I'm launching my Get a 3D Printer Fund. <laughs> For those that just want to. Uh, uh, this is uh, Sam Green of the Object Blog. Yeah. Uh, no. And I mean, it, it, and it's not just things like that. I mean, just check out. Real quick, I know we're still on this story, but check out this, the, this I, I snake. Know, you know, this, this guy printed a snake, yeah. intricate parts. We're not just talking about, you know, uh, a little, you know, uh, um, uh, what's that thing uh, uh, that you pull out, Jenga? Yeah. You're not talking little Jenga parts you stack. This is intricate parts like the movement of a snake. This guy printed this bad boy right here. Guy printed it right here and, 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 and the thing works. Oh yeah, printed it Printed as that is. as is. That came out of a printer. That right there. I mean, look at the intricacies of that. Isn't you know, to be able to print all of it where it bends. Isn't that a stethoscope in the background? Yeah, that's a steth uh, stethoscope. They didn't print that, but that thing right there, they printed that right there. Look, look, look at that now. Look, look, look at how he's moving it. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. This thing is off the chain right there. Look, look at that gears. Look at those gears. Can all of that printed at once. Can you Who's Staples? Um, oh, I mean the know, person who makes the yeah, yeah. and see if we could, you know, debut or uh, yeah, test it. Test it right here. Yeah. On, on Tech Pulse. I mean, that's just crazy right there, man. No, people really realize it's a printer that produces. I don't think well, I, I, that's what it's close hard. Close your mouth, Kevin. Close your mouth. Close your mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you know where we are? I mean, this is major, major, major. major. This, this is what you call advanced technology. Yes, this is major. You know, I mean, you, have gear, you, you print each one and then you assemble them. It printed that. Now, this, this is what I'm saying. Jobs are gone. <laughs> not no, the, that's not. That's, not not, the people who that's serious. That. Yeah, look, that's look serious. However, we need production of those printers. Right. You, you still have to have warehouses. Hold on. Can they printer? <laughs> Print 3D printer? I mean, I don't know. I doubt it. Is there one on this one? Uh, Kevin is using 3D printing. You got See how different materials can be used in the artistic process. So as you can see, this... Fantastic model has been yeah, used. It's a chair with a number of different and, and combinations of two like materials. It's a model of a woman. This is one of the major advantages of the Object Connex range is that you can take <laughs> well, turn it that a way. white material but <laughs> and you can take a black material and you can combine them together to produce a whole number of composite grey shades and then print them all together at the same time in the same 3D model. Here's another example. This is um, a figure from the Halo computer game. Again, same concept as the Neri model. We've taken two materials, the white material and the black material, and together we've produced about five different composite saying, shades points. and printed all of them at the same time in the same model. So both of these models are a combination of our rigid white material and our rigid black material. And here we have something slightly different. This is a, an example of a tire. 
In this case, we've combined objects Vero clear, transparent material, with flat. our tango no family of rubber like materials to produce the actual real feel of a tire tread. So, very nice example there. So, here we're mixing again rigid material and rubber like material. Another example of a rigid and rubber combination that is this model yes. of a stethoscope. And as you can see here, it's flexible, it actually works. It actually works. It feels like a stethoscope. This end we have the rigid material. Here is our tango wow. material, which is our rubber-like material. And here's some very white, rigid white no material. No assembly required? No assembly required? With the rubber, all the moldings. But you just have to put the, the CAD design in years. to your computer, and then it will print whatever you, whatever you have, as complex or as simple and rubber combination is this telephone. So this is printed That's a in telephone. our rigid white material and yeah, our rubber-like black material. So I guess the actual model digits phone, right. here actually feel rubber-like and are flexible, whereas the screen and the actual body of the phone is solid. And of course there's various other advantages to being able to print two materials at once. One of them like being you can produce QR codes on a physical product. Um, and of course, writing. Oh, you can call writing, obviously. Which, of course, is important Printed, I can in a number of applications. Okay. So, you customize Here's another excellent yeah, example. Your products. That many of you may have already seen. A, a moving gear cube. A gear and cube. Of course, this model combines both the moving gears, all printed in a single job, in the same way as our snake. Printed in a single job. But this time, job. we printed it in a number of different white and gray and shade colors, combinations. And shades of gray. Okay. Another and excellent and example of what we can do with objects, connex, like multi-material 3D printing. And a clothespin. Is here. And a clothespin. With the Here's an example of what we've just previously seen. This is a. I think it's part of the problem computer. people will have. Is in this case, I'll do this. It in a connect white them. material. How can you use the rubber connection? Rubber like black material. You mean like in the gears? In the case yeah. yeah. How can you print a connection? Really give you the feel. Because of the finished end product. according to the the the, the science but behind this, do once you download the schematics of whatever it is you want to print, no matter how complex, digital material, the printer is able this to replicate has a strength, that. Functional performance of ABS grade engineering plastics. So these peelers actually work. They're strong enough to actually peel. We've actually tried them with an apple. We can actually try this here today. That's 3D, nothing. Here we have our apple. You know, flaky. You need to peel you this see. To show you Excellent. That it, there you go. Just what I was saying. You need tools for this. You don't have to go to Walmart okay. no more. So we can see that works. So that's the ABS so light material. <laughs> and finally. To round things off, I've included here our giant 3D printed wrench featured in one of our previous object blog videos. And as you can see, where did you hear this? All the parts move the way that they're supposed to. Get this information? And the wrench really does work. I've tried it with a number of bolts, this is where you get stuff like this. and it works really well. So there you have it a nice overview of objects, 3D printing capabilities. Starting from the out. basics, single material this printing, I mentioned this to complex finished assemblies, to our multi-material 3D printing, whether it's combinations of rigid materials for art, for product design, or whether it's combinations of rigid and rubber-like materials, as we've seen in these examples, and these examples, to finally producing ABS grade engineering plastic performance so that your prototypes really function as the intended end product is supposed to. It's almost fair. That's it. See you all next time and thanks very much for watching. Uh, oh. So this was really to bring
give everyone, uh, uh, to bring everyone up to speed on what 3D printing is all about. Because I know many of you, we've talked about it, Devin. I mean, how long have we been talking about this now? I mean, I, don't, I, I haven't heard this in any other news anywhere. And we've been talking about this for at least a couple of months now, you see? But my, my point is this is where technology not only is going, but is. This is not the future. This is now. They're doing this thing now. And so to be able to print whatever you want, whether it's a wrench, you know, a, a toy, like you were saying, you know, to be able to print, you know, whatever you want, even, even a stethoscope, it can, you can print different parts working together. A, th a stethoscope has the flexible part and then the, the it, it, it's not, you print pieces yeah. and put it together. Now, in the handgun situation, you know, he, he, you know, most guns are made of pieces anyway, you disassemble it and you can put them back together. That's what he did. You know, he created the different pieces so he could assemble his gun together. But my point is, this is where technology is right now, not where it's going. You know, like one day we're going to be able to do this. Now, nah, we're doing this now. And Staples for $1,400, okay, it's not affordable yet, but for $1,400, you can get a miniaturized version of this in your home. Why, why are you saying it's not affordable yet? There, there well, are not for the general. That, that, that costs That's true. more than $1,400. People That's are buying true. computers yeah. every day. Mm -hmm. That's true. So no, there you is, go. This is not crazy. It's this not, is not crazy. crazy expensive. No. But for the general public, people may, because I don't think people understand the concept of 3D printing, they're going to look at that. Ah, I can't use that. You know, that's going to be the thought of a lot of people. Like, I can't anymore. use that. Not anymore. showed them that I can't make a knife. <laughs> and Case no, still is, the, is oh, back sorry. on the knife right there, man. No, so I didn't say the gun. I'm not, I'm not promoting violence. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying that people like to cook. <laughs> right, 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 right. I use it to peel my orange. Culinary, yeah, of course, of course. You know, we're, we're talking about the culinary. But, you know, to wrap up that, this section of it, it's just that this is where technology is going. And for those of us that want to be able to have uh, 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 the ability to, to, to let's see, uh, uh, the ability to have these objects right in front of you when you want it, not... Today I wake up, I, I'm, I'm putting something together. You know, like we assemble in the studio, we assemble and we go, oh man, ah. I wonder if I can make a speaker. You know, probably not the entire speaker, but maybe the parts to put the speaker together. Because, you know, you know, you know. know But if you put the design in there, that's the thing about it. If you can get the schematic and a CAD design and put it in there, according to what we've seen, yes. You can print out a speaker, a functioning, functional speaker that works. It wouldn't you know? work because you need coils and magnets but that's what we're talking about as long as you have the raw materials to make that you see because magnets can be made artificially you can make an artificial magnet you know just run an electricity through a coil you can make that's what electromagnets are those big magnets that pick up cars yeah. they're not real magnets they're just massive coils to which they run electricity through True. and then that's that's how it's able to you, you make that magnetic field right there you see? So I'm saying these things can be done, man. These things can be done. But speaking, because I know this is something that we're like, man, you know, I don't know if we could go on from here. Speaking of having these things on demand. Okay, we've been talking about um, uh, 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 cord cutters. Have you heard of the cord cutter mentality? You know, in the world today, there's, there's a movement known as cord cutters, people who are cutting the cord. I see you looking at me. Don't want to do everything wireless? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're going in that direction. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? k Stu is looking at me like, well, what is this guy saying, man? This, this guy is just, just crazy right here. But we have a movement in America. I'm not saying that you but are. The, fun you know that you are crazy, <laughs> the, the funny the thing is. The thing you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. The this time. Huh? The funny thing is, he is a cord cutter. And he don't know it. He doesn't know it. Ah, so you are a cord cutter. We're you're part of that up. movement. What, what's the deal with calling people names? <laughs> we get to this stage. <laughs> Kevin is like, my name is Kevin Stu. You know what I'm saying? Why you got to be a cord cutter all of a sudden? Well, the cord cutter mentality is people don't want to have to watch TV when uh, the networks say you must watch it, right? They want to be able to watch what they want, when they want, where they want. You see? Ah, uh, see, now you know you fit that, you fit that profile right there. You By see? association? <laughs> <laughs> so 
There are, I mean, because I, I, I'm someone that wants to cut the cord. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. I, 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 I watch a lot of digital media. But at the same time, I don't want to have to watch it when, because gone are the days when Cosby used to be on back in the day. And you would say, oh man, Cosby comes on at 8, I got to be home at 8 to watch that. You know, right. you get home, yeah. you watch it. Today, you're doing too many things. You know, you have all these things happening. People don't want mm -hmm. to have to watch Cosby at 8. I want to watch Cosby when I want to watch it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wherever I am. It started with DVR. Yeah, you see? So DVRs came out. Then you have companies like we talked about, Aereo, uh, 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 that, that uh, is a company that allows you to stream over-the-air transmissions online. So right. NBC, Fox, all those comp uh, uh, networks that give you over-the-air, yeah. they said, they, well, they rent you a uh, device, an antenna that allows you to capture it and stream it online so you can watch it wherever you want. Now, hey, No, ex sorry, before you go on, explain it just a little bit more. A little bit more in Air depth. Yeah, a little okay. bit more. Just okay, so, well, you mean Aerial? Yeah. Okay, so here it is. Aerial is a company that came up with the concept that uh, CBS, Fox, ABC, NBC, those companies are broadcasting over the free airwaves, right? They're not cable, just what you could get from, you know, a regular antenna, you know, you plug the antenna in, you cut it on, you get signal. They determined that there's a way for us to make money here because these networks are giving away, not well, not giving away, but they're broadcasting free. It's all, the airwaves are free. You can't, I mean, it's out there. It's coming into your house whether you want to or not. So they, they came up with a device just like a VCR. Yeah. You know, when people came with a VCR and allowed you to be able to record, they came up with a device, a device that allows you to capture those over-the-air signals just like you would with your regular TV but you can stream it through their site. You can stream, so you capture it, it streams online, right? You go to their site and it's there. You have your own, like you sign up with Aereo, you have your own account and so forth. So when it streams, it'll stream to your account. And if you have an internet connection, obviously you can watch this thing anywhere because you don't have to be home if it's streaming online or you need an internet connection to get online so that you can get to your account and so Cosby comes on at 8 on NBC, for example. You stream that bad boy. I'm in Timbuktu. I'm watching Cosby. I'm not home. But I'm watching it because I got aerial service. And they also allow you to DVR. So say I'm in Timbuktu and I'm in a business meeting. I don't want to miss it, but I can't watch it right there. I'm going to go to my office afterwards. So you DVR that bad boy. As soon as you come out of the meeting, boom. You're able to watch it where you want, when you want. And you know what the consequence of that was? Every network and their mama sued Ariel, tried to anyway. And the court said, because they were saying that it infringes on their copyright, you're not supposed to retransmit, redistribute. And Ariel was saying, we're not retransmitting, we're doing the same thing everyone else can do, which is they can capture the signal, they can even record it if you have a, a, DV, a, DV, a DVD burner, you can record it. So all we're allowing them to do is stream it to their personal account, you know, and they can watch it wherever they want, and the courts agreed. The courts agreed with Ariel, and CBS said, we're going to sue you in every market you open. When you go to London, we're going to sue you. You go to New York, we're going to sue you. You go to Chicago, we're going to sue you. We're going to sue you until we win. But each time they do it, the courts rule in Ariel's favor. You see? So this is the court cutter mentality. We have things like um, Ariel. We have Rabbit TV. You heard about Rabbit TV? Yeah. You Rabbit TV. We have um, um, Netflix. Everyone know about Netflix. You have Hulu Plus. All of these services, what's it, Roku? Roku, you see, these streaming devices, Apple TV, you yeah. know, uh, uh, Sony has a, a streaming media player as well. All of these devices that allow you, and really Netflix, as you've heard here on TechBalls, Netflix was the pioneer for, well, Hulu actually came around first, but Netflix really made it popular. You yeah. see, Netflix made it popular because they started to bring network television shows like Star Trek, like um, 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 the full series, the full series uh, that you could watch wherever you want, whenever you want, you see? Mm -hmm. And so this generation is now coming up to where people are saying, we don't want to have to pay $100 for cable and watch two channels. You know, no, most people don't watch literally 90% of the channels. They have, they have 100, you know, two, 300 channels. You watch two of them, you see? But you're paying Guilty. for all 100, Guilty. you see? Uh, there you go, me too. You know, you're paying for all 100. What these services do, like Netflix, they allow you to watch what you want. In other words, I want to watch Star Trek, I want to watch uh, Cosby, I want to watch I Dream of Genie, for example. Mm -hmm. You can watch those shows whenever you want, as long as you have internet connection, where you want. You can watch episode one, you can watch episode 50. Uh, last week, 
Netflix came up with their original programming called uh, there's a show called House of Cards. Yes. Where they release all 13 episodes at once because their mentality is we don't want to do what networks do. They 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 lead you in either once a week, you know, and yeah. you gotta wait till next week to see it. Yeah. Netflix said no. Nah, we're gonna give you all 13 episodes at once. You watch it how you want. You wanna binge on it over a weekend? That's you. You wanna watch once a week? Do that too. You see? This is the mentality, and the cable networks don't like it. They don't like Netflix. Yeah. They don't like Hulu. They don't like Ariel. I got Netflix on my phone. <laughs> so there you go. So now, Google. We talked about Google launching, because you know YouTube, right? Everyone knows YouTube, right? Yeah. But Google now has paid uh, uh, services, subscription services, for their um, um, original series that they're coming out with on YouTube channels. You see? Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Google original series on Google YouTube. has, yeah, they're yep. coming out with original program. Matter of fact, they have YouTube stars already. And they're saying companies like Netflix who want to come with these original series, they're saying, don't go to Hollywood, come to us. That's what Google is saying. Come to us at YouTube, use our stars. Our stars are just as good as Hollywood. Because they what have stars? <laughs> they apparently, they have YouTube stars, people that are popular on YouTube. I can't name them. They're not saying they own them or they work for them. They're no. Just, they're just saying that they are popular. Part, and they're part of their... Based on their access to use, or their use of YouTube. So, you know. YouTube is launching subscription channels with uh, pilot partners for 99 cents a month. And they're saying they're going to expand this in the coming week. Now, uh, uh, the report we got from The Next Web, that's an a online publication, they said that um, a statement from YouTube says that it has been building out of its partner program since 2007. And this is a quote from one of the YouTube people. They said, we've watched them build amazing channels that have made YouTube into a news, education, and entertainment destination for one billion people around the world. One billion people, you see? And YouTube says that over, uh, um, over the next, um, no, that over one million channels were generate, that has generated cash on YouTube. Over one million channels have generated cash on YouTube, and one of the most frequent requests has been more flexibility in monetizing and distributing content on YouTube. So they said they're gonna come up with a subscription service to allow people who want to watch YouTube content, not, not the, uh, the things that you normally watch, like you, know, you might watch um, uh, uh, those videos where someone is biking and they do something stupid. Not those kinds of things. They have actual programming. When you go to YouTube, you, got to, you can get programming like shows Apparently that YouTube I've is watched, coming out with. I've watched a few movies on... No, she... she yeah, I've watched a, a couple of movies on So YouTube. there you go. So now YouTube is saying that they're going to monetize this. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, is this you something... With, with companies like Netflix, Hulu, you know, uh, um, 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 Roku, is this something you think people are going to pay for? Nine, it's 99 cents. But is this something people will play... It depends on the content. So is, 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 do you think YouTube is going to be able to bring content enough that it's going to want me to, now that Netflix is coming up with their own original series, right? This is 99 cents a month, so it's not that expensive. But is this something that people are going to say, you know what, I need to have this digital content as well, or is companies like Netflix for $7.99 a month, Hulu Plus for $7.99, is that enough for most people? Or do you think people will, if YouTube comes out with good programming, people will be, able, will be willing to drop the starting fee of 99 cents? For a dollar a month? For a dollar. It's a dollar. It's a dollar a month, yeah. But that's, uh, 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 that's to start, depending on your package and what you want. Now, they didn't say what the 99 cents is going to cover. They say subscription fees starting at 99 cents. So for all we know, that just means signing up. You know what I'm saying? You, I mean, who knows what that means? Because a lot of times when they don't tell you the details, they say starting. Starting right there means you're going to be paying more. That's you know, your registration fee. <laughs> <laughs> They say every channel is going to come with a 14-day trial, and some will offer discounts if you prepay for a year. So you might get discounts if you prepay for a year. But this, I mean, to me, I think you, uh, uh, Google is going in the right direction. Why? Because they realize that you can't stop the cord cutter mentality. You can't stop this generation of people. Because I'm one of them. I like to watch. As a matter of fact, Devin says he never watches anything live. Everything he watch is DVR minimum. Yeah. You know, say minimum. Well, there's one thing that he watches live. Yeah. What's that? Seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> the 
whether by default well, or two. <laughs> two, two, because if there's a game on, yeah, I'm talking about a football game, Sorry. real football, right, right. Not, not American football, oh. <laughs> and he can catch it, he will watch it live. <laughs> Yeah, all the Arsenal fans, shout out to Devon Hines. <laughs> <laughs> Hail up Arsenal fans. Yes. We're, going, we're going to um, Europe this year. We're gonna we're going to be in the... This, this next year? Yeah? This next year? Yeah, because we're qualifying right now. The, the race is between Tottenham and, and Arsenal. Um, well, Chelsea too, but I'd, I think Chelsea is going to be safe. But there's one more spot left. Mm -hmm. And Arsenal and Tottenham are fighting are battling for it. Out. Yeah, yeah. So if Arsenal wins the last two games, one is tomorrow and one is uh, um, Saturday, I think, or Sunday, we're in it to win it. Somebody has to probably injure, um, what's his name, Bill? Nah. Uh, <laughs> they, they, don't need, they don't need to go that far. We got yeah, go. You never know. Yeah. That might happen. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, this, the, 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 the cold cutter mentality is alive and well. You know, everyone is a part of it. Devin right there talking about Arsenal because he knows if he misses that game, he can watch it whenever he wants. And now we know he ain't going to miss it. But no, if for it. some reason he misses that game. But he'll he catch it he as will. soon as he can. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> and that's what cord cutting allows us to do. So, I mean, do you think, Case, do you think that, that um, uh, TV is going to change? Now that we have companies like Netflix, Hulu, do you think that we're going to eventually move away from the way CBS, the business model that CBS, NBC, stuff like that have, you know, to where they, they this comes choice. on at 10 and you have to be there at 10 or you miss it? They don't have a choice. They have to make these things available immediately after their broadcast. Right. Because there's, there's no loss to them. If there's none none at all. As a matter of fact, the replay of of shows mm -hmm. allows people to see the videos, I mean the, the commercials over and over. So then let me ask you this. Right, so because why they do it with the commercials, right? So That's why true. you think that they're suing Ariel? Why is CBS, Fox, NBC, ABC, all of them? Because it's suing not what going to them. And advertisers can go and advertise with Ariel, Ariel right. instead of NBC. And CBS. So it's really just a money thing. Oh, it's all because, about because money. Because they're, they're saying that they're infringing on their copyright. You it's know? all about Benjamin's baby. <laughs> <laughs> Trust and believe. <laughs> so that's what it's all about. Follow so the money trail. Follow Always. the money trail. And right here, you see that, I mean, this is what we're talking about, man. I mean, a lot of people want to have that freedom. They want to have that ability to watch what they want, to do what they want. When they, and these things like the Netflix, like the Hulu, like the Roku boxes, Apple TV, what? Sony streaming play, mm -hmm. all of these devices allow you to be able to do that. You see? But again, freedom comes at a price. Freedom comes at a price. So what's the price here? What, 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 what price are we paying now for, for being able to watch content where we want, when we want? A dollar a month. Yeah, they, but it's over the year, so it's free. There's no, yeah. The only thing they're doing, I mean, because if that's the case, then you have to sue Panasonic, Sony, all of those for making DV, uh, um, DV, uh, DVD like, burners, no, wait, wait, VCRs. Wait, wait. Go, yeah. You have to go back in the day first. Mm. So first you go into the, the, the VCRs, mm. and you step it forward a little bit, then you go to your DVRs. And then you have to, 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 to sue the program makers mm. who make programs on your computers so that you can store or convert you can DVR it, yeah on your computer onto your computer so programmers are getting sued <laughs> uh, VCR manufacturers. manufacturers are getting sued DVR manufacturers are getting sued DVD burner manufacturers are getting sued then the, cr the creators of the devices that you're gonna store on right. they're getting sued <laughs> <laughs> so you might as well just sue everybody, you know. Might as well, and, and that's what doesn't make sense with this lawsuit against Ariel. I want to join the list of the sued <laughs> because it creates a marketing opportunity for Pulse Media Group. We need to start broadcasting shows. Yeah, yeah. We have the ability. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, why? Wait, wait, we are broadcasting. No, no. We need What's to. What's this? We need to. Okay, rebroadcast. Show yeah. those shows. What right. Ariel is doing, we have that capability. Right. Yeah. Right now, Allow all we have to do 
is, as a matter of fact, switch over to to um, the feed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then exactly. uh, uh, charge a subscription fee for mm -hmm. people to be able to watch mm -hmm. it on the go. Yeah. On my occasions live, yeah. on S. On your phone. One on, S. Your phone. Yeah, on your phone. On your phone, tablet, um, laptop. By the way, if you if you're if you are using an Android phone, please go to the play. Um, the, the what is that? The playlist, uh, Google Google, uh, play, Google Store. play, and download uh, Flash Player. Oh, Flash Player, and uh, you can watch my occasions live. Uh, with the music links browser. with your regular browser. You know, let me let me okay. get that now. Yeah. Flash player. Flash player. It's a um, one-stop shopping. One-stop shopping. Yeah, you just uh, download Flash player. My, my my regular browser. Yeah. It it doesn't it doesn't work on my browser. So it, it, your browser yeah. doesn't have Flash built in. It it plays like YouTube videos and you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. But when I go on my occasions live on my regular browser. Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't play. play. Yeah, because... But it, I have it, to use another browser that right. actually has Flash built in. Yeah. But you don't need to. What I'm, if you, if download you download Flash, right, yeah, if yeah. you have a regular browser, browser, not a browser, but a browser, <laughs> and you download <laughs> Flash Player, and it must have that F, you know, that traditional yeah, yeah, F. Yeah, the, the curvy yeah. F. Yeah. That's all you need to see on that, uh, that um, app. It's Flash Player. And it works perfectly with any browser. I've tested it. Um, you don't need a special browser to, to, to watch stuff from my occasions live. And this is for everybody except Apple. <laughs> except Apple enthusiasts. Yes. Now, speaking of, because uh, we're, we're talking about uh, browsers on phones and stuff like that. Speaking of phones, Amazon, according to a report by uh, The Verge, Amazon is rumored to be building a smartphone with a 3D screen. That's going to be their hook into the market. According to a report, they said that um, uh, uh, the phone may have a 3D display, and anonymous sources say that Amazon is actually working on two phones, including a high-end model with glasses-free 3D display, a concept that was tried some years ago with the Evo 3D, if many, uh, um, the um, HTC Evo 3D, they had that capability where you can watch uh, 3D uh, on your phone. Wasn't that popular, it looked cool, but it wasn't that popular, and Amazon is said to be doing the same thing. Now, for those of you that know, right, we, we said here on Tech Pulse there are three uh, forms of 3D. You have the um, active shutter, you have the passive 3D, and then you have stereoscopic 3D. That's what's known as glasses-free 3D. What that is, is it's, it's the same concept as the um, active shutter and the passive. Um, active shutter, uh, for those of you who don't know, companies like Sony, they make active shutter, Panasonic, they make active shutter, where it flickers, you know, fast. You, you can see it flickering, you know, the light flickers. Right. And it's sending one image to one eye, one image to the other eye. And so your brain puts those images together and that's how you get that 3D concept right. when you're looking at the TV. The problem with active shutter is that it gave people headaches because of the flashing. You couldn't see it, but the brain still picked it up. And so many people suffer with headaches and stuff like that. So active shutter 3D never really took off too much. Then you have the passive or polar uh, uh, 3D glasses like you get in the movie theater. Right. What they do is that they uh, polarize the image so that the odd numbered lines of the screen, because you know your screen has resolution, odd, I mean the horizontal lines and the vertical lines, right? right? So all the odd numbered lines get sent to one eye and all the even numbered line gets sent to the other. Then those two pictures form to get in your brain to produce a 3D image. You look at it and think it's 3D because that's how your brain puts it together. Right. It's really not 3D, it's just two images that, right. uh, that's that right. your when mind you is seeing. You, see you, see, you see two images, exactly. What stereoscopic 3D does is it sends two images to your eyes without glasses. So if you have like the 3DS, that's an example of stereoscopic 3D, where you have the image, two images, and that's why if you look slightly to one side, you're gonna see the two images, because there's actually two images being sent, one to one eye, one to the other, and your brain puts it together as, three, uh, as, as 3D. And that's what um, Amazon now is trying to do. So here's the problem with 3D technology as we have it, as we said before. 
you have to be directly in front of it. If you're off to the side a little bit, you're going to see the two images. If one eye is weaker than the other, you're going to start to see two images. Mm -hmm. So, Evo, the Evo, um, um, you remember the uh, HTC Evo, Devin, back in the day? Mm -hmm. The HTC Evo came out with a, well, not the HTC Evo, that was the actual phone. HTC came out with a 3D capable phone, a phone that gave you stereoscopic 3D. It looked cool, you know, but you had to look at it dead on. There was no angles, you know, look at it, you know, at an angle, you, dead on, or you're going to see two images. Amazon is coming up with their own version of uh, stereoscopic 3D for this phone that they're creating. Now, my first question is, is Amazon going to be successful in the phone department? You know, they're coming out with their, I mean, does it even make sense for them to get into the phone? And two, is using stereoscopic 3D, which is a proven technology that doesn't work as far as um, really immersing you in the 3D world. Because if you're looking at your phone right now, pretty yeah, much dead I'm on. I'm still trying to find that flash. <laughs> <laughs> but if you look at it at an angle, or someone is calling you kind of, it's over here, you're going to see that two image. You see? And it's not going to be clear. You're not going to see whatever text clearly because you have these two images being sent. Is this the right move for well, Amazon? I mean, what do depends, you think? It depends on what screen they're using. What if they use a slightly domed screen? Well, they do have curved screen, but that's going to add hundreds of dollars to the price. Hundreds of dollars to the price. So I don't know if Amazon wants to be out of the gate with a $1,000 phone because that's what it's going to cost. What? Without what service. Is it? What is it that made the iPhone as sought after as it is? Okay, that's a good question. I think you're going to throw that one out to Devin. Devin is an iPhone enthusiast. Wasn't it the price? Here on Tech Pulse. Huh? So wasn't it, wasn't it, was it just the price? The, it was the exclusiveness of it. Right. Which, which part of it was the price. It was made exclusive. Yeah. And pricing helped to make it exclusive. Right. You have a phone mm -hmm. that has this slightly domed screen. Mm -hmm. That's and gonna be a thousand dollars, by the way. And 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 it makes 3D real from all angles. What happens? No one's gonna be able to buy it because if 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 they can come up with that technology, because right now that technology doesn't exist. Yeah. Nobody was able to buy the iPhone when it first came out. Right. They just pressed their nose against the glass <laughs> and said, "That's nice." Three D. From all angles, yeah, doesn't it's, exist. it's different. It, yeah, it's you, you different. You can't do it. This is, because you know, we talked about this, you know, the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, it's a tricky market because people find it fascinating, right. but they don't find it a must-have. Right. You know, it, 3D is just nice, you know, but they don't go, well, I can't watch any movie without 3D. And, and not to cut you off, but yeah. part of the reason for that is because you're watching a football game, right? Yeah. Or whatever you're watching. You have the boys over or whatever, group. There is no group watching with 3D because you have to be all in a military line yeah. to see. So if you want to watch 3D yeah, with me... You have tears. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if you're sitting like where you're sitting and the TV is, is right in front of you, you will not see through. You will see two images. And that's what killed 3D the way we have it. That's why it's, it's more of a gimmick now. In the theaters, if you notice... The screen covers where all the seating is. Yeah. So nobody has a bad seat in a theater. So you can show 3D in a theater and everything is tiered. Right. You know, so, yeah. but in the home, my TV doesn't cover my whole room. My TV just fits. It doesn't? <laughs> that, I thought it did. That, I heard you have like a 100 <laughs> foot TV. <laughs> See, these tech Kids buffs. Yeah. Point. Yeah. But my point is, most people have a sofa. And the TV is generally the width, well, not even the width of the sofa, yeah. but it, like in that centerpiece right. of the sofa. So if I decide I want to sit down and watch a movie, and you're like, oh, yeah, let me come over and watch a movie, bring my wife, bring everybody. We have a whole group night. Yeah, that won't be we have to my sit. TV's about this big. <laughs> we have to sit one in front of each other. One and in I'm not gonna single be in five. And I'm not going to be in front of you. I mean, <laughs> or, you know, it's, it just doesn't sit well. Just not going to work. No. So... This stereoscopic 3D that Amazon is coming over with. First, my question is, should Amazon even get into the phone business? Is the phone market, I mean, Android phones are crowded right now, right? Everyone 
has an Android phone. You can't come out with an Apple phone. I mean, obviously only Apple can come out with that. Right. If Amazon tries to be <laughs> Apple, I just don't see them having the, people having the desire to have an Amazon phone. You know? And, and, and all they're doing is rebranding, right? They're, yeah, they're, re they're just coming out with, they're going to have regular phone makers make the phone and they yeah. stamp it Amazon. That's going to be Amazon's phone. But the caveat is they have 3D screen. Should Amazon get into the phone? That's my question. Or they should just even forget it and, and try to come out with something different rather than a phone with stereoscopic 3D that nobody wants. Otherwise, HTC Evo 3D would have been a big deal now. But nobody really bought it. I mean, it was a cool gimmick. But you're looking at your phone the way it is, you, could, you couldn't see it. The phone in front of you, the way you have it right yeah. now, with stereoscopic 3D, would not work. You would start to see two images. So right away, emails, everything is fuzzy. You see, so I'm saying, what do you think Amazon should do? Is, is this a good move? Or maybe they have something up their sleeve that we don't know about? That's not a fair question. <laughs> 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 because <clears throat> you said the guy pushes his hand into the thing and he comes out with leprosy. Should he push his hand in the thing? <laughs> no. <laughs> Does, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just not... Should he have pushed his head at the thing? No. <laughs> Do you need an explanation? No, he came out with leprosy when he pushed right. his, his so left common hand sense in. Would tell so you. common sense says, don't put your hand in. You know? You put your hand in on the other side, then you need to be checked. <laughs> Mental issues. You know? No, so you, they should. So you're saying Amazon should just stay out of this altogether? <clears throat> yeah. They, it, I mean, the phone market is too crowded. You're not going to get into Apple's market as far as Apple. You know, Apple, Apple is looking to get out of their market. <laughs> Apple, the, Apple wants to be like everybody else. No, I right. guarantee you. Right. They, they, they rode that wave of exclusivity, mm -hmm. and yeah. they're now in a corner because... They're not integrated. They the applications, you know, they're separate. Yes. And now you don't have Steve yeah. Jobs, obviously. You so go, you go to someone and say, "Okay, watch this video." People go, "I can't." <laughs> <laughs> I, don't have flash. I don't have flash. I don't have, you know, yeah, just just stay out of it. And yeah. and some of the other things Amazon is uh, 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 reportedly working on. They're working on their own streaming player because they're trying to get into the cord cutter uh, situation as well. They're working on their own streaming player. They also are building a, um, uh, um, they said, um, like a cloud service. That's what it is. They're trying to have their own, I, not iCloud, but <coughs> Amazon Cloud, where you can store all your information on their service, just like Apple does. Apple has iCloud. Uh, Microsoft has SkyDrive. Google, Google has Google. Google has. Right. You know, so Amazon is now coming, trying to come up with their own and, I mean, they have a lot of content. They have uh, a lot of things that people might like. Um, Amazon um, um, Prime, their, their video uh, service already. They have a streaming video service already. So for them to come up with a streaming player isn't a far stretch. For them yeah. to come up with a streaming player, because they have the Amazon Prime. You know, you want to watch movies and stuff like that, or buy episodes of shows you can to Amazon Prime. They're, they're uh, streaming. Who, who wants to buy it? Apparently, people do. Two ninety nine can get you a, a, a series of whatever you want to watch right now on Amazon Prime Video. Two ninety nine, you know. You have to pay but you it. can store. Uh, uh, they're coming up with their cloud service. So my my thing is, if Amazon is going to try to come out in the phone world, they're gonna have to do a lot better than a technology that has already been proven that nobody really wants. Stereoscopic three D. Forget about it. You know, if they're gonna do it, they're gonna have to have something. Innovative, and I don't. I just don't see them being able to come up with anything that isn't already out that people can't get somewhere else. In other words, the the Samsung Galaxy S4, powerful phone, has a, a quad core processor in it, NFC. You know, has a uh, um, 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 uh, 802 uh, 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 N uh, wireless card built into it. So yeah. this phone is stacked. The iPhone, my you know, phone, saying, my, my phone has N wireless. You have the Samsung Galaxy, so, so you're a Samsung no, Galaxy two, fan. Though. Oh, the two? <laughs> <laughs> so, are, are you happy with your phone, man? I'm, I'm two generations younger, yeah. I'm, I'm quite Would you happy. get the, the, the GS4? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. If, if someone would give it to me. If someone would, <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd gladly take it. 
and we are accepting our donations here yes. at Pulse E Media Group. Yes. So yeah, so I, I'm saying Amazon's gonna have to do something much better than than 3D glasses to uh, 3D phone to really make it attractive because they're gonna use the Android. Uh, I'm assuming unless they're gonna come out with their own operating system, which oh. Windows has tried and it's not really working with the Windows tile. Uh, as you know, their their um, tile. They're advertising uh, like crazy though. The, the the Nokia, yeah, yeah. The Nokia commercials are coming out. Matter of fact, we just showed a commercial here. Uh, was it Friday, Devin? Yeah. With the Nokia versus Samsung Galaxy and um, um, Apple. You know, the Nokia came out with a commercial actually uh, uh, directly towards those challenging. phones, yeah. challenging those phones. And I, yeah. I, Nokia has to do Having stuff like that. Over yeah, door, yeah, you've seen it. You see? <laughs> Nokia has to do that though. They have to do stuff like that if they're going to become relevant again. Because they yeah. were relevant, what, 10 years ago? Nokia was something that you bought, you knew about Nokia. Yeah, and Nokia then was we, a deal. Nokia came out, they partnered with Windows to come out with the Lumina 900 uh, a few years ago, and it was a good phone. Just nobody bought it because Microsoft didn't have any apps. You see, and a phone has to have apps. That's just all they came up, But now they came out with Windows 8. Windows 8. And you can't get a new PC. You can hardly get a new PC without Windows 8. Right. So now they're, I guess, they're kind of doing like what Apple did. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, okay, here's your Windows 8. Here's your Nokia Lumina. <laughs> and the thing, the, the bad thing about that is uh, people have been complaining about Windows 8 when it comes to non-touch devices. They're saying the touch right. devices, uh, Windows 8 works great. You know, you, you can swipe, scroll, everything, yes. cool. But when it's non-touch, and I'm trying to do that with my trackpad, forget it. Nobody likes that. And, and so that's why uh, Microsoft, in their update, Windows 8 Blue, or Windows Blue is what they're calling it, which is Windows 8.1, the new update to their Windows 8. Oh, really? They're going to bring back, well, they have to, because people have been complaining profusely, because most computers that have Windows 8 are not touch. Most computers yeah. that have Windows, they're not touch screen, so I'm, I'm stuck, you know, swiping on my, my trackpad, and if you have like a 15-inch screen or something, I mean, the trackpad is even smaller, so yes. you're trying to swipe, it just can't work, and people were saying, bring back the start button, that's all I want. I want the start button back so I can scroll and right. get my stuff the way I used to, and Microsoft said, in Windows Blue, they're bringing back the start button, because they have to. I mean... You can't come up with a technology designed for touch when most of the things you're on mm. is not touch. So, so I, I just, I never understood that. Yeah. And then the things like the tablets, they came up with Windows RT, a scaled down version of Windows 8 that gives you no functionality. Yeah. So Microsoft, what are you doing? That's my question. You come up with an operating system that's designed for touch, but you scale it down to bare bones in Windows RT, which nobody likes. Because it doesn't have anything. I can't use it for anything. Have a death wish. Windows 8, the full function, top notch. You know what I'm saying? It's good if your computer is touch. But guess what? Mine is not. So I'm not going to update to Windows 8 because I'm just right. going to have headaches trying to navigate that thing. You know what I'm saying? On my trackpad. I can't do it. You Sis see what I'm saying? Sister G, I feel for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hence why your phone has been ringing off the hook. Non-stop. Help. <laughs> right? Me. So, I'm please. telling you, man, it just, it, it can't work. You Basically, know? What, 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 what you're saying, then, is Windows XP is still the best operating system. Seven. Already. Seven. <laughs> that, that, that. I'll, I'll say with seven. Seven. Seven is good. I, 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 eight, my problem with Windows 8 is that they made it for touch. That was my problem with it. They made it for touch screens. And so my computer is not a touch screen. You know, I haven't graduated to that yet, you know, and so I can't use the functionality that Windows 8 gives you. And then on their commercials, they show these people in choreographed dances and what. I don't want to see that. What, how is that going to help me use my machine? Because That's the problem. That's dance. the problem. You need to do that in order to Learn be able to utilize <laughs> the full potential of touch. Windows 8 touch. Even if you don't have touch screen. <laughs> I, I have touch screen. I have touch screen. Doesn't work with Windows 8 what? because there's no connection between my touch screen and Windows 8. I just can't touch my screen. Yeah, I, I'm about to say, I don't know about touching you. your screen does not make it touch screen. No. <laughs> I have a touch screen. Function. Yeah. 
Touching your screen needs to have a function. It needs to connect to some... Touching your screen, uh, just for those of you out there, according to Case 2, touching your screen is not touch screen. Okay? <laughs> just to make that distinction. Just because I can touch my screen, it doesn't mean you have that yeah, technology. Devin, Devin is doing it and all that, the time. <laughs> and Devin is like, why is this thing not working? I'm touching the screen. What, what's, what's going on? You know, you know, he actually went... Away from touching and just decided to just okay, since I, I, touching seems like poking, so let right. me just caress you gently <laughs> and see if that's going to do something. Nothing. Actually, <laughs> I know you weren't planning to talk about that, but maybe you should tell uh, tell the people about that technology that what? requires no touching of the screen. Which technology is that? Um, the the S four, the the Galaxy S four yeah. has that. Yeah, you have to be, you, you're kind of close to it, yeah. and In it senses your finger. Yeah, you can yeah. do that thing, but that's not what we're, we're talking about. That other one, I can't remember the name of it, that is going to revolutionize gaming. Because <laughs> oh, you're you talking my language. You can just... Oh, the, oh, the Oculus Rift? Or are you talking the Illuma Room? Both. Both. Oh, both. Because they're going to have to wait, combine wait, both wait, of wait. that. I'm telling you now. Time, I mean, time, time, the, time. You know, after this next story, we get into that okay, gaming okay, segment right okay, there. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kate. Kate, too. Because the audience up right those there. words that you're using need to be censored. It sounds like, yes, Okra and Rift. Oh, <laughs> it's called and the Oakleus Rift. It has nothing to do with any... The Oakleus. Oakleus Rift. Rift. 3D uh, uh, glasses. No, not 3D glasses. Virtual reality. Virtual reality goggles, headset. That puts oh, it in 3D and you. That's the one with the treadmill that you were doing a couple <laughs> weeks ago? You saw that? Yeah. Yes. That thing is bad, Fo man. Fo yes. That thing is yes. bad, man. Yes. Fo He's watching the show. Oh, I'm getting too low. See, now you know why you, I get you, the way I you get. You join our excitement. Pulse. You see? So let me just show you that because for those of you at home, remember we were talking about 3D, right? The 3D printers. I just want to show the folks at home what they can get at Staples right now. This is the actual unit you're going to get right now. And, and, and let me just read to you a few of the specs right here. Now, they said that uh, um, if you wanted one of these printers, you had to buy it online before. Can you just, can, can I stick a pin really quick? Is Staples going line. out of business? Staples? Yes. No, it's um, 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 Office Depot. It's Office Depot? Yep. Office That's the Depot one. Going out of business? Well, one of the stores is closing down on Oakland and University. You know, by where that old Walmart store. is? Right, but I, I told Devin that uh, the store was closing so he could go down there and get some stuff. Yeah, my. They my, have some s sweet deals. My uh, issue was is this the last thing they're selling? Oh. If it was them, no, 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 it was it's Staples. At their last Staples. <laughs> <laughs> they say that you had to pay exorbitant shipping fees to get this um, printer at home, but not anymore. Staples has become the first United States retailer to sell 3D printers in store. That's what they're saying. In store, they're starting with one of the most affordable 3D printers. The Cube is what it's called at. One thousand three hundred and no, one thousand three hundred dollars, and that's it. You say uh -huh. it's Wi-Fi ready. It's not fourteen hundred. It, it's thirteen hundred. Thirteen hundred. You get that sale. Wi-Fi ready. It's capable of printing with both Windows and Mac operating system. It prints objects as wide and as tall as five point five inches, and comes print ready with twenty-five free templates to try out. So you could be printing 3D objects immediately as you get this thing out of the box. And of course, Staples will also be selling the plastic refill cartridges. The raw materials we're talking about, Staples is selling that as well to keep the printer running as long as the customer requires. So you could go out right now uh, uh, and buy this 3D printer today if you want. Now let me show you. Uh, uh, what this printer looks like. Because you're saying, man, this thing... This is major, man. Th this thing is just too huge in life. You know what I'm saying? Too huge in life. You know? So let me, let me show you right now. What are you doing? <laughs> what, what's this guy doing, man? You know? This 3D thing got me all thirsty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the guy, the guy is in the corner there making these gestures. I'm like, what are you doing? What, what does that mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's making all kinds of gestures here in the studio. 
let us pray. I'm like, what is this guy doing? All right, so l l let me show you this this picture right now. This, uh, I'm going to try and uh, enlarge it. Whoa. There we go. Now we talking. Let's go and show the viewers. This is what you're going to get at Staples right now. Right here, this is what you're going to get. Let me move down so you can see. There you go. This is the actual unit. That's what you're going to get. This right here is an object that they printed, obviously. But obviously, you don't have to just print stuff like that. Any kind of CAD design that you put in, it will print 5.5 uh, inches high, 5.5 inches wide, five, uh, and, uh, however deep um, the object is. So you can't print in this particular printer for the home model. You can't print something huge like that giant wrench. Right. But anything that's 5.5 inches long and wide, you mm -hmm. can print. So you can print a wrench. It's just going to be a smaller. Uh, a five inch wrench. Right. There you go. You can print uh, a, a cup. You can print a... Uh, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying, a stethoscope, whatever it is you want to print, a you five, can print. A five-inch stethoscope? <laughs> a five-inch five what, what, stethoscope, you know what, what I'm saying? What, what, for your dollhouse? Yeah, for your <laughs> dollhouse? What, what, what? If you, if you <laughs> want to print things for your child, maybe, there you go. But the point is, this Barbie is it right here. I mean, this thing doesn't look like a printer, but it is. This is what you can buy right now for $1,300 at Staples. And you can get yourself a 3D printer and print usable. Obviously, that right there. Yeah, you know, that's not usable. So Nobody cares about that. Could we wait till next year when they come out to the model that builds, uh, let's say... Knives? One foot. I can build a five-inch knife. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a big printer for a five-inch no. knife. <laughs> a five-inch knife just sits neatly on your waist. Come on, it's like a phone. And it's plastic, so it's undetectable. No more worries about metal detectors right. going through, you know, you, you're good to go. Think of the schools in New York. <laughs> Think of the terrorist activity you could, uh, uh, well, well, we're not condoning such things, but. Uh, yeah. This is this is called sarcasm, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> those of you For those of know. you who missed it. <laughs> Lest so, we hear exactly. on the door. Yeah. <laughs> we're shutting is, you down. This is FBI. sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the things that, yeah, I mean. They, they're going to have printers that are, are able to print bigger and so forth. But for right now, the inaugural printers coming out for the consumer market are going to be this size. We're just 5.5. Mm -hmm. But imagine a year, two years from now, when this thing is able to print bigger objects. Hey, you know? I'm not waiting for the one foot one to come over. <laughs> I have an idea. Let's take a break. And you have that video lined up for, um, for the Code Red? Code Red? Yeah. Oh. You know what? I still got that video on here. Drop it in, let them see. We did a show yesterday. Proud of these guys. Exciting CD release. Talk about it a little bit. Talk, talk about it and, a little bit. And um, their album just came out. And uh, they, Timeless. yeah. And, and exciting. Really good musicians, talented guys. I'm excited to know them and to know the skill level as a musician myself. To just, you know, big up another musician when they're really, really good and talented. And this is overdue. Really, oh, really overdue. Nothing happens before it's time. Nothing before it's time. And um, you, you heard that jazz piece they did? Yeah. I remember when Zemroy was learning that. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, I heard this and I'm just determined to play it. Mm. Not only did they play it, but here comes Bobby Rose mm -hmm. singing, mm -hmm. and the whole band is in on it. And I'm like, really, really good, really good stuff. Whoa, really good. You know, you you said you have the video, right? <laughs> of course, I got the, the interview. Video. Okay, yeah. just making sure because what are you asking? We want Do everybody. To, we want everybody to really just take in. Yeah, this a is little the, bit the, of, the yeah. promo video that they showed last night at their CD launch event. We we're gonna show that here real quick. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that, that's the album cover. Whoa. That's the album cover. And we're going to show... Hold on, hold on. Hold on. That's it's a great cool. group of guys. A yeah. great group of guys. Okay. Anybody who has watched The Night Shift mm -hmm. would, would have heard an interview... Well, who watch it regularly? Right. Would have heard an interview with Zemron Lewis, who is a bass player. Oh, and band leader. And the band leader. And one of the executive producers on the album. And Jason Farmer, who is 
keyboard player, Damien Marley's um, music director, producer himself, Grammy award winning producer. Yeah. Right? Um, he's a keyboard player. I've interviewed them both on the show different times. Right. So they're not strangers to the Pulse E Media Group. Right. And these guys are as humble as they come. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most awesome things about them. Mm -hmm. These guys rub shoulders with the best of the best. And you wouldn't know it by the way they act. Nope. You wouldn't know it. And that's what's going to take this group far. Code Red? Yeah. That's what's going to take them far. Let me tell you a story. And I tell everybody this story. And I told, I told this story when I was interviewing Zebra. Yeah. Right. right here in this very studio, that was what? About three years ago, there was a show on Friday night, which is coming back, right. called Old School, New School Joint. And it was the day before an event at church, and there was a rehearsal. Right here, mm -hmm. just before right, the show. Right, right. And Zemroy hung out, hung out with us for a little bit right. into the show. And, you know, he had to sit down with right. us for a while. And I played this song, He Can Handle It, BDMCC. Right. right. And he was in there jamming to the song. And he was like, yeah, yeah this is a nice song. <laughs> oh, hear that? Yeah. And, you know, he's always yeah, playing yeah, his yeah. air bass. Yeah. And, like, and everybody is here looking at him. Everybody that knows. Right. Because he is the one playing bass right. on this song. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that song sounds good. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and we're just looking at him like, that's you that's playing you. <laughs> bass part. He's like, oh, for real? <laughs> <laughs> no lie. Yes. There, there's that one. He was there. <laughs> He's cool, he's cool. The guy oh, is yeah. cool, man. So let me show you this video, uh, the Code Red launch video right here. Let, 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 let's, let, let, let's bust this thing out real quick. You got the sound, everything good, Devin? Everything's good. It's all the way to max. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Anytime you need a lover, call on me. Code Red Bad is, you know, a, a, a collection of talent from different bands and different places That's the leader of the man. That's the leader. and That's when we got himself. together we had no idea of Busy. what we were doing we were just happy to be together to play some music have fun and spread the joy how are you Please feeling you sure you're feeling Irene? preparation is the key the show is the reward um, the work goes down in rehearsal and how you prepare even at home how you prepare mentally for the show um, I, as the band leader, what I, what I do personally is I study my band members' body language. I know when they're comfortable, I know when they're not. Now, as the years pass, which has, it has been over 10 years, as the years pass, we found brotherhood. We found a collective spirit, we found chemistry, and the rest is history because, you know, we have still survived all the challenges that we have, um, you know, been put to. Timeless is the title of them. Of course, it has an unconditionally on it. And um, most, the, the, recent, the most recent release, Doctor, doing very well. Already a messenger, teaching the youth about roots and culture, telling the masses they remember, that's all they might deal with, yeah. Blessed love, this is Luke Jenner, the messenger, and dancing and embracing a great band like Code Red. Right now they have their debut album to be released on the 12th of May. Make sure you get your copy. Can't afford to miss this music at its best. We've always been torn doing production and all of that. We have not been able to say, okay, sit down and really engineer the perfect show. We are going to do it this time. Our fan base and the world can see what we can do. All the energy we used to put together, put into other people's show, we put it into ours. I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. Did you order the code red? 
I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did! I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. Did you order the code red? I did the... Show we streamed live last night. I mean, that, that, that thing was off the chain, man. Yeah, that, yeah. that show was pretty good last night. So uh, that was that CD uh, launch. Um... I saw him. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. Rich? Yeah. <laughs> The original H R S two. You know what I'm saying? The show was off the chain, man. Yes, it was sir. good. It was good, you know. And so, for those of you out there um, that don't know a lot about the type of music that Code Red is, well, why don't you fill them in? What kind of music does Code Red? Uh, 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 what's their style? It's it's reggae. It's mm -hmm. reggae music, mm -hmm. and it's it's real reggae music. Right. It's right. not. It's not a synthesized right, music. right, right. It's a real reggae music because mm -hmm. guess what? Here you have a bunch of musicians mm -hmm. who are playing the music and singing to the music. Right. That's all them. They're right. Like, there's, 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 there's there's no auto tunes no in there. Auto -tunes, no auto <laughs> That's them. That's them. <coughs> Especially the guy on um, um, Robert. That guy, that Bobby guy is, Rose. That guy is crazy, man. Jeez, let me tell you. He's that, got a ball talk. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> that guy been pretty working on it. <laughs> but I'll well, tell you, go ahead, go ahead. They did Doctor mm -hmm. and blew the audience away. Rock, oh, Bobby Rose, let me tell you. They brought out a wheelchair <laughs> onto the stage and Gave him a fake heart. <laughs> the works. It was crazy fun. Listen, if you missed it, yeah, you need to send some emails to the Pulse eMedia group requesting that it be put up on on demand. On demand. So you send email ePulse an email and Pulse will get in touch with Code Red and see what we can do for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much how that's, that's gonna pretty go. Much what it's going to right now. Right? Because this is no joke. If you missed it last night, you really Welcome to the future. You really missed something. Yeah, it was, it was definitely off the edge right there. And we at Pulse Media, we deal with being on the edge. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, we don't just do oh. standard stuff. Wait, you, you know mean what I'm saying? I need to get back up on the edge? <laughs> oh, you fall off the edge. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. And one of the best, <laughs> one of the best cameramen in the business is sitting right here. Mm -hmm. K Stu. This guy get this we have to give him props. We have to give him props. Get shot props. That I never seen. I mean, you would think he's in the shot. The mm -hmm. way he's getting the shot, you would think he must be his eyes. Helmet cam. Yeah. Like he's using yeah. a helmet yeah. cam or like something. His eyes. Yeah. You're looking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the that, guy is that good. You see, that he's sitting here looking why, unassuming. Nah. That is why you get those images that boss around. <laughs> 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 yeah. The guy, is, the guy is good. And that, the, show, the show shows the, show, show, the props, man. The show was good last night. The show was good. And if you miss it, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe we might have, you know, we're going to have to put this on demand for the, for the people out there that have seen it. Because this thing off the chain. Now, Devin was asking us, right? Getting back to technology here. Devin was asking us about Illumaroom. Now, have you heard about the Illumaroom technology? No. You no. heard about the Oculus Rift, the guy with the treadmill. Well, what did you think about that? What? Yeah, as far that, as that gaming. Was, that was, that Are was, you a gamer? That was, I play games. So, you in, you, you are in. Just right. saying. Right. We're talking I'm about techno for... technological games. <laughs> yeah, not, you games people, you know? Not, not, not those games. Not those games. Not on this show. <laughs> but um, I, I do play FIFA quite a bit. It's okay, a so you're a you know? FIFA. You're a FIFA enthusiast. Yeah. So you, you and Devin are, you're, 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 you're are close pals, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then you know EA signed an exclusive deal with FIFA through 2022. Yeah, exclusive I've been, I've been playing... deal. Man. FIFA from actually my first FIFA experience was FIFA 98. Ooh. 
I was taking it back. Right. I was taking I was, it back. That was my yep. first FIFA experience on PC. Mm. Oh, oh, on PC. On PC. So you're a PC or console game? I'm a PC gamer. Ooh-hoo. Now this guy is a purist right here. When you're talking about PC gamers, you know that 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 there's a little bit of a uh, how you put it. There's a little bit of a, a tussle between yeah, the PC, PC gamers and, and the console gamers. PC gamers believe that their way of playing games with the keyboard and mouse is the most accurate way to play a game. Console gamers, they don't give us no love, man. The PC gamers don't give the console gamers the respect because PC I, was the original. You can, I just want to say I go both ways. <laughs> I am proud to say You're bi in, this, in this case, I go both ways. <laughs> and I also want to say that I've been playing games of... Uh, 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 the soccer game mm. before it became FIFA. Right. At that time, it was just FA. <laughs> <laughs> it was, no it was, it was so no long fee. ago, it was just FA. <laughs> they had no fee. No <laughs> <laughs> just want to stick that in. So no pun intended. Now we're talking about FIFA. We're talking Oakley's Rift. You've seen the thing with the treadmill. Yeah. Now, this thing now, the guy was on the treadmill. They haven't seen it too. The guy was on. Now, the image we showed yeah. is not the image you see because you're going to see a 3D image. You're not going to see right. two images. Right. right. So when you, the only reason you saw it is because the camera can't show 3D. Right. right. You know, all the camera can show is two images. When you see it, you're going to see a 3D image. Okay. Right. So the guy was on the treadmill. He was playing a shooter. When he wanted to run, he ran and he moved in the game. Yeah. You see? And when he wanted to turn, he turned left or right or whatever he turned, and that's where he turned in the game. Now, we were saying that there's two types of 3D that's outright, well, forget about the stereoscopic and that, that, that's, that's, that's garbage. Right. We're talking real 3D that's going to advance. You have virtual reality, which is what the um, Oakley's Rift is. For those of you who don't know, we're going to explain it again. Oakley's Rift is virtual reality. What virtual reality is, it places you in a virtual environment mm-hmm. all around you. So when you look in the Oculus Rift, when you look left, you see environment. When you yeah. look right, you see environment. Not it, it just change. it yeah. changes your perspective. So you look and you the scenery changes in there. So when you're on this treadmill now and you're walking, you walk in the game. So if a mountain is over there, you can walk to the mountain. That's what the Oculus Rift is bringing to gaming. Right. Putting that next level. You talk about Star Trek, uh, uh, um, the um, um, holodeck. Holodeck, yeah. This is it right here with the excited. Oakley's Rift. I was never excited about gaming coming out <laughs> until the Oakley's Rift. The Oakley's Rift. So yes. you've seen this it. This is That's... putting soccer in a new dimension. Can you imagine that now? Playing FIFA. We, we have nothing on that. Okay. Now, you, just, you thought yeah. that was where it ended. Now, Microsoft is coming out with the second... So we talked about virtual reality. Now we're talking about augmented reality. That's the other 3D that really is going to change. Now, augmented reality is virtual reality it puts you in a virtual space, right? right? A space that doesn't exist. Augmented reality is it takes your physical environment and augments it and makes it into the gaming world. Oh, K2 is ready to see what Microsoft calls the Aluma Room. This is what they're planning to come up with with the Xbox, the next Xbox, the one that's coming out this year. This technology uses the um, Kinect, you know, the Kinect yeah. they come up with, uses the Kinect and a projector to um, augment your physical space. So the video we're going to show, for those of you that haven't seen it, this is an actual room. This is not computer-generated room. This is an actual room that the Aluma room can make look like it's a computer room. It can make it look like it's whatever game you're playing. So snow falls, it falls in the room. Snow is falling in your room. You see, objects are coming out of the TV and bouncing on the floor. You see, that's the Aluma room. If Microsoft comes out with this thing, I'm telling you, gaming is going to change forever. You already got the Oculus Rift that puts you in that virtual environment. Imagine sitting in your room now and your room becomes the environment. You see? No, as far as I was not as concerned, the aluminum room was, was turning on like <laughs> You're illuminating the room. Right. <laughs> How do now, you spell Oculus Rift? O C U L U S R I F T. Oculus. No, that would be Oculus. You, you said O C U? O C L. 
O C O C L E U. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think it's O C L E U. O C L E U. Yeah. I don't. Relating to the the ocular. Ocular. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Somehow I think that it's, uh, it's okay. Science class. I've yeah. been to one or two. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. You found it? Bio- yeah. Biology. No, I didn't. But okay, I'll, I'll, I'm. Go ahead. I'm. I'll, I'll look it up. There you go. O c u l i u s. O c u l i u s. Oculus Rift. R i f t. L i right? Yep. L i u s. Mm-hmm. All right. So we got the Oclius Rift right there. But let, let, let me play the Illuma Room. Now, watch this, watch this video here. The Illuma Room. This is what Microsoft... So this is not 10 years in the future. Microsoft is looking to come out with this peripheral to the next Xbox that's coming out in November. Okay. This thing is just sick, man. When I saw this, I'm like, Microsoft come out with this? And I'm a, I'm a hardcore gamer. Everyone that knows me knows that I am hardcore. You know, I'm not... You know, I'm not uh, these casual gamers that, you know, play Big Mama Cook-Off on the Wii and all that stuff and then call themselves <laughs> gamers. Nah, 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 man. I'm talking hardcore. You know what I'm saying? So check this out. But, but you know, not to not the Wii. You know, but bowling in the Wii yeah. and tennis in the Wii, it really gives you a nice work. Yeah, it, it's cool, but I'm not going to play that and call myself a gamer. You know what I'm saying? No self-respecting gamer plays only that and walks around and say, I'm a gamer. Nah, 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 nah. you can't, there's no way you can call yeah, yourself. A Luma Room with a soccer game and. But that's a soccer game though. So FIFA is a game, it's a whole game. We tennis, that's not a game. I mean, you just, you're doing this. You know what I'm saying, I mean, you know, man. I can't, I can't defend that as a gamer. I can't defend that as a hardcore game. Soccer is a game. You have to have skills to play FIFA. You ain't got to have no skills to play Mario Tennis on the Wii. You ain't got to have no skills, man. You got to have skills to play FIFA. You got to have skills to play Madden. You got to have skills to play Halo. Skills to play uh, um, um, Resistance Fall of Man. Those type of games, you got to have skills. You know, you just don't wake up and decide I'm a gamer and you're going to play Halo. Nah. You don't just wake up and, oh, I, I, I'm going to play FIFA today. Never played it before. I'm just going to jump and play it. I'm a gamer. Nah, man, Halo. it don't work that way. Halo had we, me out. We tennis, <laughs> there you go. That's what I'm talking about, man. When you lose a month of your life to a game, you know you're a gamer. <laughs> you know? All right, check this out, case too. Check this out, man. This is the Illuma Room. And te- just tell me what you think. This is what Microsoft, they're coming out with. Is it? It's not out yet, but this is in development. Did you take it off mute? Yeah, it's good to go. You hearing something? No. I think he still has done mute. Yeah, I think you have it. Man. Curses. Let's do it there. Hmm? I can't see. Oh, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I could have guided you. Oh, okay. I wouldn't have led you astray, bro. You would not have led me astray. There you go. Hold on. Okay. Let, me, let me rewind this. I'm telling you, case 2 this thing is, you know, when you see this, man, you're going to be like, And like I say, this is not a cartoon. So when you look at oh, no, a uh, uh, graphics, no. This is a real room. The Luma room. With uh, using the, um, the, uh, the uh, connect and a projector. Mm-hmm. What this thing is. All right, good. Go check this. you do again? <laughs> Illumium oh, yeah, is hot. a proof concept <laughs> system that augments the room surrounding television screen with pro project solutions to enhance directional experiences. For example, such illusions can change the appearance of the room, the living room, into a cartoon world. The illusions can distort reality, extend field of view, and enable entirely new gaming experiences. Our vision for a productized Illumarum system is an ultra-wide field of view device that sits on the user's coffee table and can cover a large area surrounding the television. Our current prototype uses a commodity wide field of view projector and a Kinect sensor. 
The Kinect captures That's color and geometry of the room, and the projector displays illusions around a television screen. The Illumirum system is self-calibrating and designed to work in any living room. The most obvious way to increase immersion is to simply extend the content from the television screen out into the room, replacing the physical reality with the game's reality. Instead of simply extending the game content, one can focus only on the high contrast features, for example, highlighting only the edges. With Focus Plus Contacts selective, only certain game elements escape the television. For instance, with a first-person shooter, we can bleed only weapons fire or explosions out of the television. We can also display markers representing other characters or key items in the game. The room furniture can be used to mask out some areas, making it appear that the game is being played beyond the wall of the room. Illumiroom can change the appearance of the room to match the mood of the on-screen content. For example, one can saturate the room colors, make the room appear black and white, or highlight the room's edges. By distorting and reprojecting the room texture, it is possible to warp reality and make it appear as if the room itself is responding to the game. We can also generate completely abstract illusions, which greatly enhance the peripheral motion, but do not borrow content from the game or the room. With the snow illusion, snowflakes can be affected by the speed of the race car, but they can also bounce off the real furniture or accumulate on the floor of the room. Motion effects can also be illustrated by bringing lighting from the game into the room. And finally, a game object could fall out of the screen and bounce on the real floor of the room, or roll under the coffee table using the same physics as in the game. Uh -huh. Some illusions, like Focus Plus Context Full, require direct access to the game's source code and its rendering. However, it is also possible to drive the illusions with limited or no access to the game. For example, we implemented a real-time optical flow computation to infer camera motion from any video footage like the game Borderlands, shown here. We can also intercept controller input directly and use it to drive peripheral projected illusions. This example shows commercial game Portal augmented in such a way. Finally, almost all illusions can be combined with one another, which makes them an easy and flexible palette for designers to tailor the desired experience to any given game or other video content. In addition to playing games, a loom room can be used to watch movies and television. We can display panoramic video content with Focus Plus Context full, now the TV is just that centerpiece. or with Focus Plus Context segmented, displaying the video only on a portion of the wall. Uh -huh. We can also blur the peripheral content to decrease its emphasis. This footage was captured with a custom dual camera rig that simultaneously captures a narrow and a wide field of view video. Because we are not projecting on a flat white screen, we must compensate for the color and geometry of the room's furniture. On the left, we see the image the projector is displaying, and on the right, what the viewer sees. With any projector, it is difficult to completely neutralize the effect of bright ambient illumination. Here you can see the performance of a loom room with the lights on. These illusions are just a small sample of what is possible with the loom room system. In summary, Illumiroom enables a palette of peripheral projected illusions that create novel, interactive experiences in any room. Look at that. Uh, that's falling on the floor uh, of your living room. And that's what Microsoft is bringing to the next Xbox. Now, can you imagine playing uh, 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 FIFA? Can you imagine playing Halo? and the enemies are coming out of the screen around you. And when you shoot, your whole room vibrates to show that you shot. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, when, when you drive in the vehicles or vehicles coming, they're coming out of the TV and driving past you as you're sitting on the couch. I mean, this, this thing is just crazy right there. But it, it doesn't stop there. I, towards the end, mm. the, the movie thing. Yeah. You see? So here's my TV screen. Right. But here is what I'm watching. <laughs> exactly. That's what the Luma Room, I'm telling you, man, these, these, this is where technology is right now. I mean, we're talking about 3D printing. We're talking about Oakley's Rift. We're talking about um, 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 a Luma Room. This is where we are right now with gaming. You know, and for me, as a hardcore gamer, I can't wait for the 360, the next Xbox to come out with that. I mean, I'm, I'm on the pre-order lines right now. You know, I'm, I'm there already. PlayStation 4 showed some good stuff when they came up with their announcement in February 20th. Some good, but all they really showed is updated graphics, which is good. You know, I like a good graphical game, but when Microsoft showed this, I was like, man, that, that stuff is old school what PlayStation is coming up with. Just graphics, when you can even watch a movie, and the movie, it, yeah. it comes off of your TV and continues. No, you know? this takes me to another place once again. Mm. Now, here you have police training. You have scenarios. Mm -hmm. You're just like flight simulators right, with pilots. Right. And another person in this room really likes that game, flight <laughs> simulator. <laughs> really, really likes that game. <laughs> but. <laughs> Joystick, joystick, and all really likes the game. But think of, 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 of cops in training. Mm. SWAT in training. Right. That's phenomenal. Phenomenal. I'm telling you, man, this stuff is off the chain the, and it's here. The only problem I have with it mm. is one, mm. damage to furniture. Right. <laughs> And two, damage to self right. as a result of damage to furniture. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only because limitation that this system brings. The collisions in that room with me and one of those games. Because playing play the connect, the connect? Yeah, yeah. People have to stay away from me. Right, right. <laughs> Whether it be we are right, any the, kind of, of Xbox, of, yeah, but any virtual, right, any kind of virtual, like that, right, remote control, yeah. remotely controlled game like that. Mm. People have to stay away because I really get into it. Right, you're bowling, I'm really right. Are no, you really bowling? Right, and I think we bowling. I, I played. I, I went bowling for the first time in my life. Yeah, about what December, mm. about December, January. Yeah, January. I mean, for the very first time. Right, right. And I did really well. Right. And up until now, I didn't really connect it, but it was wee bowling that helped me. Right, right. Now, can you imagine what my, 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 getting immersed in something like this? Right. Think aerobics. Yeah. You're really into it now. And you got people around you. Right. And the people are around you. So we fit has just been blown out of Exactly. Think of, 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 of Billy Blanks coming back with a new... Tybo. Tybo. Yeah, right. Tybo Illumin Room. Right. That, <laughs> what, what, what's it called? <laughs> Tybo Illumin Room. Wait, wait, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. The problem with that, again, mm. is move your furniture out of the way. Right, right. So you don't kill yourself in the process. You, you don't want any injuries. Right via furniture right. or damage to furniture via injuries right. and chances are you really want to go try it out on someone as soon as possible because mm. that's what happens in the virtual world you right. want to do it in the real world. Right. <laughs> virtual bowling you want to go bowling you want to go bowling to see how you stack up you, you, remember when Nintendo first came out with Duck Hunt right 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 had the gun right how many people do you, did you know mm. Wanted to go duck hunting. Everyone who played the game. <laughs> everyone was right at this point now. Everybody becomes a, became a marksman. Right. Everyone is a professional 
Uh, Carpenter uh, now. Yeah. Exactly. Give me a, 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 a duck cock. <laughs> <laughs> and a gun. Yeah, and, and flush you know, out some ducks. Do you know more people watch that than the, which, which show was really big? And more people watch the duck thing. Duck Dynasty? Yes. <laughs> duck Dynasty. What? I'm, I couldn't believe it. I'm not hitting anybody, you know, for watching what they want. Right, right. But I'm just weighing the whole thing and going, wow. Those ratings are pretty good. Yeah, we need to get into ducks. <laughs> we have some right here in my development. That, that won't go away. We can watch them and um. blow the duck call. <laughs> And see what happens. And shoot them with a 3D I didn't say that. That's all I said. Putting the technologies together. No, I'm not going there. <laughs> I, think, I think that's against the law here. <laughs> I'm just saying. We're just, we're just saying. We're not telling you to do it. We're just no, saying. No, just saying. Oh, just yeah. Saying. So, since, since you mentioned that, let, let me ask you this. Um, have you heard of Google Glass? That uh, You haven't heard of Google Glass coming out? What, what kind of drinks get served in there? <laughs> well, Google Glass, it, uh, these um, glasses, they don't have the lenses, but they have the frames that fit over your nose, and they have this, um, it's a computer, right above your right eye. And it displays an image that uh, simulates a 25-inch screen about 8 feet away. You know, an image right above you. It has Wi-Fi. So what you can do is, and it has camera, 1080p recording, you wear these glasses now. Now, Google came out with these glasses uh, last month. Um, uh, they, they, 8,000 people they chose, people wrote in to say what they would use Google Glass for. Google chose 8,000 of them to sample the, the Google Glass, to wear it around town, do what you want, and then they're going to use that information to make the consumable version of Google Glass. So right now, you just have the developer's version out with these 8,000 people. What they do is they put it on, it has 1080p recording, right? You can take pictures, you can connect to the internet. Let's say you're walking down the street and you're like, you see a, a coffee shop, you go, oh, um, what do they serve? You tell Google, Google Glass, what does this coffee shop serve? The Google Glass can see the coffee shop, the name of it, look it up online and display right there in front of you what they serve and whatnot. Everything is right in front of you. You go into a, a library, you say, man, where would I find you know, cars or whatever, like Barnes & Noble, for example. Um, you tell Google Glass, Google Glass, where would I find um, cars? And Google Glass would lead you to the section in Barnes & Noble where cars is. You see? See, you just lose our job. <laughs> <laughs> but now, Devin and I were talking that this is, the problem with it is, you're going to have some punk who's going to put these glasses on, record you, and you don't know they're recording. You know what I'm saying? Because they say Google Glass record. They come over to Casey's house. Hey, K, what's up, man? Yeah, yeah. Now, you don't know they record. They got this stuff on. You know, you, you ain't clean up in you know, the house over the weekend. They tell you, oh, yeah, you say, hey, man, you got them things recorded? No, no, no. I ain't record nothing. Next thing you see on YouTube, your house, you know what I'm saying? Because they record it and download this thing and put it up on YouTube. And Google has come out with this technology, Chris, and they've got to come out with it for the consumer. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm asking you now, do you think this is something that the consumer... Regular people, are we going to have to change the way our ethics are as far as, you know, or is this something that I can just be able to put on? Uh, and Because, I mean, nobody wants to be on camera 24-7. Now, now you're going to ask an ethical question. <laughs> but that's your department. On, on, on matter of fact, Night Shift. Oh, this Lord, guy hosts great. a show called Night Shift, Off the Chain, man. This, the guy deals with real topics, not the stuff people, you know, everyone's, everyone politically correct don't want to talk. This guy is ready to talk any issue, you know, any issue. But he does it in a way that's smooth, you know. So before you know it, the guy KO'd you and you don't even know you down. Knockout. You know what I'm saying? That's, and that's when you know the guy is good. When you on the floor and you think you standing up. You know what I'm saying? That's what k Stu brings to the talk radio circuit. So watch Night Shift Tuesday to Thursdays, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. But now... You know, when you go back to Night Shift and you have one of your guests on now, and uh, you talk about Google Glass, right? Mm. And they, you know, you, someone comes over to your house, or you just see them in the street. They have these glasses on now that can record 10, well, 720p video. So high definition, so you're not getting a grainy Bigfoot type image. You know, Bigfoot, you can never see, 
You know, you never know right, right, that it's right. Bigfoot. You ain't gonna see stuff like that. You're gonna see high quality, high res images on the web. Do you think we're going to have to change the way we interact with people? You know, then our, our laws as far as what's acceptable and what's not, when Google rolls this thing out? When you can record okay. accurate video like that? Okay, so now again. <laughs> <laughs> No, you got to get into live like everyone is watching. Right, right. Live like everyone, because they are. Because they will everyone be. is watching. Right. It was one thing when camera phones came out. Right. And something was happening and somebody went like this. And <laughs> <laughs> right. Right? Right, right. Sneak, sneak a little sneak video. Sneak a little video, right. And then post on YouTube and said, right. hey, check this out. Right, right, right. 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 <laughs> now... They're going to say, oh, this is happening. Google Glass. Yeah. Record. record yep. Or show or whatever. It's, it's and the thing is, they just came up with the update last week that allows you to instantly upload it to YouTube right there. Yeah. No computer needed. You don't have to go home. You know, like if you have something on your phone, you want to get it to your computer, you have to hook it up you oh, know, no, no. Uh, and do all of that. Do not it. your uh, <laughs> iPhone. You know, you, I still got to hook it up. You know. But now, as long as you have an internet connection, you're connected, and it has 3G. So it's not just wireless hotspot. You see, as long as you have cell service, yeah, you can use... Hey, man, they, they got to save it. battery. You know, 4G kills battery, man. And Google is trying to make sure this thing can last you a day. So they're coming out with the older versions just to keep you know the battery life strong. But I can record something right now and say Google Glass upload. Nobody hear me, but I'm uploading it to YouTube right there. As I record it, Google Glass upload. That's it, and it's uploaded to YouTube right there on the spot. Okay, this has goods and bads, mm. like everything else, pros and cons. Right. I saw recently where in Russia. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a dashboard cam right. in their car. Right. Why? Because accidents happen on the regular. Right. So the regular driver is driving and his dashboard cam is running. Right. This is now taking that and saying, in your everyday life, because things is, things are always happening. Right. You need to be right vigilant. Right. 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 So now everybody becomes a TV reporter. Right. Does this mean that anchors are in jeopardy? <laughs> what it, what so I think TV it means, reporters, TV are, reporters need to be watching out, right? Because now CBS Four can't get on the spot, right? Quick enough because right. here you have 13, 14 people mm. already there when it is happening. Going right. to Google Glass, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Upload. selling this one. <laughs> Upload report, but can you imagine the implication for cops? They have this thing on, their, their, their commanders can give them live updates in the field. They can see suspect has run into warehouse and they can give them directions right there. Or their commanding officer can say, two of you need to go this way and that way. And all that information comes right, and you see it right above your eye. All that, I mean, it, that, I see the implications there. I know, again, pros and cons. But now, for the regular man, I'm going out. I don't want to be on camera every time. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing to know someone is, yeah, you know, not? and in Japan, matter of fact, in Japan, they uh, made it illegal to remove the flash from phones. That way people know you're taking a picture of them. You can't sneak a yes. picture in Japan. You can't, uh, and you got a picture of someone. They said it was illegal to remove any kind of flash. The phone has to have a flash but in order for them to take pictures there. Google Glass, there's no red light on. You don't know you're being recorded, and the guy has it. No, man, I'm not recording you. The guy recording you, man. Yeah, that, that, that works bad for the couple that just broke up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that really works bad for them. <laughs> But, like you said, yeah. in, in, in a situation where good guy, bad guy, yeah. witness to something, you know, it's, right. it's, it's, it's applicable. But, uh, but for the regular man, I don't know, man. We're going to have to wait and see how Google Glass really Here's stacks up for the regular consumer, the regular guy every day walking around with this thing. The etiquette, I mean, to know that, okay, I'm going to someone's house, let me turn it off. You well, know? Here's the other thing. 
we know Big Brother is always watching. Right. You know, that's when I'm out. Whether, whether, whether. You sure? <laughs> Are you sure? Well, may, maybe not when I'm out. Okay. So we know Big Brother is watching. Right, right. So Big Brother and his mama is watching. Is watching now? Mm hmm. And you can't do nothing about it. Because the other question is what is privacy? Privacy is being able to do stuff without everybody seeing it. That's what privacy is, but this takes privacy away. Didn't Big Brother do that a long time ago? Didn't you watch Enemy of the State? What's the matter with you? I watch Enemy of the State with Will Smith, yes. But now, to have a camera on me even when I'm in my own home, you know, my home is messy. I mean, I, I, I don't clean it, you know, spotless every time. Who is in your home? You know what I'm saying? Apparently, anyone now that's wearing Google Glass. Because no, now- Don't invite people to your home! <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> well, that's something that Devin is trying to get me out of. He's saying that, <laughs> man, you need, to, you need to hang around people. I'm telling him the same as you. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling him the same thing as you, but the guy's like, nah, oh, man. No, 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 no. You I agree too, with him. You are too <laughs> Just do it outside of your home. <laughs> so go to someone else's home. If they'll allow you in. <laughs> you got Google Glass. There's no guarantee that they'll allow you to get in. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, if we're supposed to be and mm -hmm. going ethical, right, right. If we're supposed to live like everyone is watching, right, because that's what it is now. Here you have the clergy not only telling you to do what they say, but they now really have to do what they say because right. they don't know who's watching. They don't know who's watching, and that eliminates the whole. He touched me. <laughs> and it's not the song. Right. <laughs> right? They're not talking about the Holy Spirit moving. Right, right, right. So that goes away too. But again, I say it's a problem for the couple that just broke up. <laughs> because now all of your stuff, all of your secrets are now going to be out in the open with Google Glass. So, I mean, this, this, this to me, Google Glass is a good invention. It's a good thing. It's just, it's, it's it, there's just too, it's just too easy it's, for it's someone open. to abuse it's it. It's open. It's, it's just wide too open. easy hold for on, someone to abuse it. But at least you have the Oculus Rift to go and enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> so you well, can on. get and stressed the room. out. The little room. The little room. Yeah. Well, here's, the little room. Yeah. here's it. Here's this. Wasn't the gun a great invention? In this situation, <laughs> absolutely. In this situation, you know what? In this situation, you will need a few 3D printers. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> but everything, it, it is a good invention. Right. It's just how you use that invention. Right, right, right. And that's right. a determining factor. Of anything. Yep. Of anything. Yep. Cars were great inventions. But if I go in that car outside and you walk in the street and I run you over, now a car becomes a problem. Right. So this is going to be, and then now you're going to have places like um, government buildings. They already don't allow you to have cell phones, like use your cell phone camera in some government buildings when you go in, in there, they'll tell you you can't have, you have to, your phone has to be off or whatnot, because it can take pictures. I mean, they're going in- pictures uh, of you though. Yeah, well, of course. Where's privacy? Yeah, because they want to have pictures of you. They just can't, you just can't take pictures of them. Matter of fact, we talked here about uh, um, um, CISPA, that CISPA act that was going to pass that was in Congress a few weeks ago that would allow companies like Google for governments to go in and ask Google if, if, they, if they have any reason why they want information on Google's database. Google would have to give them that information, all your information, and you wouldn't know anything about it. You know, right now, Google has privacy acts that prevent the government from taking that information without a warrant, without some warrant to show, I have to have this for the national security. With the CISPA Act, it would have allowed the government to come in and just say, I want uh, your database for the last you know, two years right, on right. everyone that signed up with you, and they have to give it to, to the government let, without you knowing. Let me ask this moronic question. Does the government that, already yeah. have that information? They do. Oh, okay. But they don't have what Google has on you. Oh? 
they it sounds have. like Google has more. Yeah, they don't what have. Like. Who Google has more information on you than the government? So, uh, see, and uh, this is the thing. The government, and we, we talked about this story here too. The government tried. They used the iPhone, right? They tried to get a conversation between two two crooks, right? That were using iDevices, yeah. and they couldn't break the encryption. And they complained to Apple. And told <laughs> Apple, your encryption is too good. We couldn't break through on a needed stake out. They were, they, they were staking out two criminals using eye devices to get evidence of what they were doing, like, you know, eavesdrop, and they could not break the encryption. So you know what happened? Apple applied to the government to use Apple phones as the government standard phone. Apple's phone is right now being tested by the DOD for usage. You know, like how BlackBerry was, Obama uses BlackBerry, that's the official, because of their security. Oh, really? iPhone, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, Black, Black, Obama uses BlackBerry. You That's just sent up BlackBerry sales. <laughs> BlackBerry is you. his official phone. But Apple is now applying for, uh, and the S4 actually passed. Passed the DoD uh, uh, usage for encryption and security. The Samsung Galaxy S4 passed, BlackBerry passed, and now Apple because FBI couldn't crack them. So out of those three, which one do you think the government is really going to seriously look at as their official phone now? They tried to crack. The, matter of fact, they were on stakeout. They tried everything. They used their top people, and they could not break the Apple encryption code when it comes to sending stuff wirelessly because Apple has it encrypted because they don't want, because people, they don't want people's uh, information to get out there and so forth. So, so Apple has over 128-bit encryption built into their latest iPhone, and they so could crack is, it. So is... Um is the is that technology going to be the new way of communicating for uh, <laughs> I can just see you know the mobsters you know going I'm not talking to you unless you have a Google that's Glass the, that's the standard phone yeah, for the know, mobsters iPhone what you talking about it in, in that song I, I mean an iPhone yeah you know huh? what you talking about it in, in the song drive last on. night yeah, yeah. last night Hmm? Where did you see Butcher last night? <laughs> <laughs> I just threw that one but in there. Driver, driver, he said, I have a Nextel phone with a singular chip. Mm. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, they can't, right, right, right. So, this, this is pretty much what it is. This is pretty much what it is. So, I'm saying now, when we have these technologies, right? Samsung Galaxy S4, or the Blackberry, now you have Apple on the market now to be the next phone used by the government. I'm telling you, these, these encryption. so when you talk about Big Brother watching and, and, and stuff like that, there are things that, believe it or not, the government can't get. And that's why the CISPA Act was put in Congress. But that's why it was put there. Because the government wanted to be able to get information without you knowing. So you sign up with Google, Google has a privacy act saying, we, we promise we won't share your information with anybody. That's what's in their terms of service. You sign that feeling secure that Google not gonna give my information to anybody. The government steps in and say, look man, you can get information we can't get. For whatever reason, you can do it and we want that information. You have to give it to us. And Google said, no. We told our customers, this is gonna be private even from you. And so the CISPAC went to Congress and Obama, uh, he, he nixed it. He said, that's not gonna happen, you see? So the thing dropped right there. Because the government to get that power, yes, there's a lot of things the government have, but even they don't have everything. I mean, Google is the type of company that has technology. They have designers, they have engineers that believe it or not, the government don't have, you see? And so they can get information on you, they can't true. get. Apparently, which is why the CISPA Act came about, because the government feel they need to subpoena stuff from companies like Google, from companies like Apple, because they can't get that information regularly. So they came up with this act that would, uh, would force them to give them the information without a warrant. They could just come to Google and say, Google, we just want your database um, for the last 10 months. And Google had to give it to them. And Obama said, no, we're not rolling that way. You know what I'm saying? The government can't have that kind of power. The government has to be able to play by the same rules. You do your surveillance. But if you can't pick it up with the surveillance you have, that's life. You can't go around and just take things the way you want it, when you want it. And that's what happened with the CISVAC. That's why it was squashed right there on the Senate floor. So here we are at the end of another Tech Pulse. Man, this thing was action packed. I'm I want to never thank coming Mike back here. <laughs> 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 I want to
to thank my boy K Stu for coming by. Yo, man, it was a good time. Thank everyone for joining us, for watching. I'm telling you, tomorrow we're coming back. What's happening for the rest of the week? Update the people. Come on, man. The rest of the week. You're, give, you're giving us uh, stuff just watering our mouth and just, you know. Hey, that's how we do it here on Tech Balls, man. We got coming I up a revolutionary growing plant that naturally projects light. What? Google Earth 7.1 Android update coming with Street View and more. Windows 8 phone gets a full res photo backup worldwide. And guess what? Apple wants the code that Google uses in the Samsung Galaxy S4 in court. All of that coming up. Yeah. This Listen, every day, 10 a.m. to noon, 12 p.m. 12 p.m. Tech Pulse Live. You don't want to miss it. Good stuff. This guy, Harvey, Harvey Reginald Smith, the Harvey. second. Harvey. Uh, why am I calling you Harvey? Harvey. You know, Hartley like Reginald. <laughs> might as well. Hartley. <laughs> HRS2. Really, really. He's as crazy as he sounds. No, but seriously, good I'm stuff. Done. You don't want to miss it. And um, so every day, 10 to noon, uh, weekdays, and then tomorrow night. 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. live. K. Stu. What, With what, a what night shift. What, what you got coming on, man? Uh, uh, tomorrow night is, is Healthy Love. Dr. Jenny's J. Love Stone. Yeah. Healthy Love, that sounds like, you know. You can't like, afford to miss it. You know? Well, you know what? That's yeah. a good topic for Google Glass right there. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. That this, sounds dangerous. This here is why I'm not coming back. Yeah. I'm not coming back. People but, can see me. You know, <laughs> tech, I'm not even like Nita when I'm on this show. Tonight, tonight at 8 p.m., we have. Mech Me Talk. Yes, oh, tonight. Yeah. It, uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Thursdays. With Bertie Hall, it's funny. Oh, yeah. You don't want to miss that it. That guy is crazy. Yeah, it's off the chain. It's it's a little bit irreverent, but uh, bit. yeah, irreverent. <laughs> However, it's clean. It's just irreverent, but it's fun. Check him out. You know, uncut. Oh yeah. You and know. They, they're gonna have um, weird laws in Florida. You know, like weird laws, like not fact. Laws. Is it just Florida no, they're doing? No, the U.S. You know. There's some oh, weird laws, yeah. like like the one with. The one where do you know it's illegal in Florida to have sexual relations with a Pokemon? <laughs> really? Yeah. That's you never knew history. that. You never, you knew, never knew that. And did you know? Let me have to get rid of my Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> What was the next one you were going to do? Did you know that it's illegal to have sex with your wife in any other position than the military position? I mean the missionary position? That's illegal. If they catch you, you just said Big Brother is watching, so... Wait, 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 wait. All of that you're going to hear what? on Mac We Talk. So... If it is your wife, it's illegal. If it's somebody else, it doesn't matter who. <laughs> it doesn't matter. matter. Who. It's, it's illegal. It's illegal. Only the missionary position is allowed in Florida. In Florida. Yep. So, stay tuned. Scooch you across the border. Do you the business? We're going to check you I'm out. Done. Peace. I'm done. Out of here, right? Thank <laughs> you.